Well, I hope that worked. Welcome, everybody, to another exciting episode of Conspiracy or Not Here We Come. As I reload the page and make sure everything is working, the episode of Conspiracy or Not um, Did it work? Allison is here, and it did work. The promo worked. Yes, well, yes, sounds... I was going to say, it, it did. Okay, hey, Allison, um, it's in your email, hon. I told you it would be in your email. It's been there for 25 minutes. If you're having trouble with your email, I can drop the link here in the chat, which should make it easier on you. And let me just go and grab a fresh copy. And then I'll delete it as soon as you get in here, but do me a favor and get in here quick so that I can delete this link. There it is, Allison. Come on in. <coughs> Alright, everybody. So, hey, Richard Madison. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, as people filter in, there's, um, I want to say hi to Amy and, and let you guys know I got a message from Gandalf. I don't think he'll be making it. He uh, left me. Hi. There she is. Okay, I can delete this link. Hi, Allison. Hi, hey. how you doing? Hey, hey. Allison. Hey, how are Amy. You? How right. are you? Doing great. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah, you sound just fine. Hi, let me just shut off the uh, other one there. Uh, put the sound off. Okay. Okay, so people are filtering in. Hey, James, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, let me just uh, make sure I have all my ducks in a row. Um, I just, I was, uh, I just as you were coming in, I was letting everybody know that we probably will not see Gandalf tonight because he left me a, a message um, on one of my videos. I guess he was using his cell phone. He said he probably won't make it tonight. He said he just got off work. So... I don't think he's going to make it home in time, and if he does, he, I don't know, you know, probably going to be tired, or I don't know, he'll probably have stuff to do, or maybe he'll get here, and he's got the link in Skype, so just in case he's listening, um, if he gets home and checks his computer, there will be a link in Skype, so maybe we'll see Gandalf later. Cool. Uh, Allison, um, yes. I've had a request from two people already who will be interested in joining this conversation, if that's okay with you. That's fine. Okay. Well, I'm going to open it up in a little while after you and I have some discussion, and then I'll, I'll invite them. And you know them both, Influence Freedom, and I'm pretty sure you know Blue Blood. Yeah. So they both uh, showed an interest. Hey, King Nine, haven't seen you in a little while. Um, so they both showed an interest in tonight's topic. Um, Great. I'm actually a little bit surprised. This usually doesn't happen too often. People aren't asking me to get on my panel, but there it is. So... All right, okay, we got. Okay. All right, so we got twelve now. Uh, let me pop out this chat, and um, pop out, and then I'll go over to the hangout page so everybody can see who's talking. I know that the listeners prefer it that way. I think I did something wrong with my OBS. I tried to. Um, I did it once before, like not last week, but two weeks ago, after Josh showed me how to how to uh, get the uh, promo like in inputted into my OBS so that it would run through the OBS as a, like an opening. But I think I did something wrong this time, and that's why I sort of had to go and do like a screen share on my desktop the way I did it. But as usual, we're less than professional around here. Um, that's okay. I think I'm on Hangouts video call twice, so don't feel bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> well... I mean, if you want to figure that out and you accidentally leave, then you can come back. No, I'm fine. I'll just keep it on. I may not be able to see the chat, so hello, everybody. Um, I'm not going to run back and forth with the chat and stuff. Okay. Um, if you're interested, you can. if you want to go over to my channel, um, you hit the, little, the three little dot button, and um, there's an option to pop the chat out, and it creates its own little window for you, and you can use it put it where you want um otherwise um if you're not used to 
and I know you're not particularly, you've only done a couple of hangouts, right? Yeah, I, I don't really know how to do that. It can be um, it can be pretty distracting when you're in the middle of a conversation and you're trying to read what's going on in the chat. Yeah. Um, so without practice, it, it, you can really screw up your conversation. You sort of lose track of who said what. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. I think I'm going to stick to the naked truth here. Okay. Well, I do want to go back to the very, very beginning and say hello to Amy. Hello. Hi, Amy. Hi, Allison. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you? I'm great. Awesome. All right, guys. Um, Allison. Yeah. How long have you been supporting my show? You've been subscribed and watching Conwick shows for what? About two years, or what? Maybe. Or maybe. Probably about that. Yeah. I I'm not sure. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Um. Let me see. Did you were you watching the show when Ian was co-host? I think so. Yes. Okay. I, uh, he left not too long before I was w watching it for a little while, and then he left, and then Bartimon came in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I miss both of them actually. Yeah, as do we. Indeed, we do. So. And oddly enough, I have not had contact with either one. They both wow. have sort of fallen off of the map. Yep, wow. right off the radar. I got one brief communication with Bart about, I don't know, six months. Yeah. And then... On whoop. Skype. On Skype. Yep, on he showed Skype. up after about six months. He was gone for months and months, and we were like, well, you know, wondering what's going on. And he showed up on Skype and said, sorry, it's got stuff going on in my life. He said, I just don't want you to think that I forgot about you. And then I replied, and he has, haven't heard from him since. So Wow. Uh, yep. Don't know what's yep. going on with him. Well, you'll probably hear from him eventually. I hope. <clears throat> I hope so. Life lightens up. That happens with people. Okay, so I'm glad you're here. Um, and since we are talking about Reiki, what I'll do is open the floor up to you. Um, tell us what it is. Tell, okay. tell us how it works. Bring everybody up to speed for anybody who has no idea what this is. So just take us from the beginning. Well, Reiki is a form of hands-on healing. Um, the, the energy is... Uh, Reiki means uh, life force energy. Um, and you channel energy i guess you call it channel it's more like you are like a conduit for this energy and uh you can either lay hands on to a person or um you can have your hands above the person uh in order for the energy to enter the 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 person and do its healing and you don't try to force it in you just let it go kind of like singing lessons you don't force your voice to do anything you just kind of let the voice out and um anyway so there's like um different hand positions that you do with it like you do on the crown of the head and the eyes and the ears and the back of the head and the neck so on and so forth down to the feet um i do not uh, go to the private parts i hold my hands above the private parts i'm very specific about that but some other people do the private parts uh, in touch i do not um and that's not the way it's taught but that's how i feel about it um but you don't need to be touched in order to do that reiki one is mostly self-healing and you work on other people uh, but you can't do distance Reiki distant Reiki is level two and level two when you do distant Reiki you send that energy to wherever you want I mean I've sent it as far as Cebu in the Philippines and um, I don't know over the United States as far as California um, and um, let's see, the master part, which is level three, 
um, and Usui Reiki, which is what I do. Um, that's basically for teaching another person. Um, and so that's what you do. Um, Reiki has principles, like uh, the first one is just for today, I will count my blessings. And so there's a list of five that um, you learn through that, and you learn symbols. And uh, in the Usui that I learned, which is very simple, there's four symbols. There's two symbols for level one, and then you have one is for power, and it gives you a little more power. And then the other symbol is for emotional balance and that kind type of thing. You know, so if you're healing some emotional thing with somebody, you can use that symbol. And um, the next level, level two, you have another symbol, and that is to help you send distant Reiki. And the third um, is basically for teaching. So each time, each level, you are attuned, and um, you spend a specific time. Uh, working on Reiki before you can become attuned and um, usually it's about a month uh, for level one a month for level two and about a year for level three I waited about six years um, to be attuned for level three um, and um, let's see uh, I guess that's about it for the moment uh, you got any questions? I have lots and lots and lots of questions. Okay. <laughs> As you know, we're having this discussion because of the email conversation that you and I have been having over many weeks. Yep. And um, obviously you wanted me to know about it because you're the one who brought it up in the first place. You and I have been communicating an email for quite a long time. I used to give my email out on occasion for various purposes and you're one of the very few people who picked up on it and have been in email contact with me for quite some time and it's something that you continue to mention and then obviously you're aware I'm just bring I'm bringing the audience up to speed so obviously recently um, I began challenging you on the Reiki thing in email we've had pride quite a healthy lively <laughs> a fairly large exchange over the last couple of weeks, and so that's why I thought I'd bring you on. But I do have tons and tons of questions. Um, first of all, um, you you said that it, it was a, a hands-on. That was like the first thing out of your mouth. It was a hands-on. Right? Yeah, so that's you, the initial thing. But then you went to another aspect where you don't have to have hands-on, and then you described a situation where you are sending Reiki energy literally on the other side of the world. Yeah, you can do that. When when you are tuned for Reiki 2, you become a Reiki practitioner, and that's the level that you are, then yes, you can send the energy wherever you want. So, okay, so how does that work exactly? Well, how... I mean, I, it, I, I, I just have to press the idea where you started off saying it's a hands-on, and now you're talking about sending energy, you know, with basically no range limit. Well, there is no range limit. That's just the way it works. Um, the first level, you cannot send distant Reiki. The second level, you're not attuned to do that. You have to be attuned. Okay, what does that mean? It's it's a special ceremony. That occurs. Um, a ceremony. Yes. And and, and what, you, what happens is your teacher will go through and they will do certain symbols over you and stuff. And you become attuned during this ceremony. What, is, what does it mean to become attuned? Um, well, that's a good question. It's uh, basically bringing your frequency up, I think to the level of being able to do uh, what's happening in the particular level that you're at. I'm not sure I understand, really. Well, 
it gives you the ability to do uh, the distant healing when you're at level two. Um, I think it's an energetic attunement. Um, it's rather esoteric, I think, in, in a sense, but not necessarily because uh, it's just something that a lot of people don't know about. I mean, there is a particular method to do it, um, the attunements. So, Okay, so you mentioned that it was a ceremony, and your, your Reiki teacher or your, your master that you tutelage under... You go through this ceremony, and and they, you said, what holds symbols over you? Yes, yeah. So it's a combination of symbols and movements, and um, they're done in a particular order. And um, and then after that ceremony, quote unquote, is done, you are attuned, and you can have the ability to do that. And does it ever not work? The attunements. Yeah, I've never experienced them not to work no so it works every single time 100 percent. when you go through your ceremony it's like getting a badge and then now you can send reiki through through the phone lines or over the airwaves or anywhere in the universe right anywhere you want okay so you go through this ceremony your your teacher hand waves certain hand positions symbols and then, pardon me for using a, a, a glib term, and I'm not trying to be offensive here, but what, you gain extra powers? I, I don't under, I really don't understand this. It feels like it. It's really weird because I, I know when I was attuned, like Reiki 1, when I was attuned for Reiki 1, I didn't really feel anything. And um, I practiced and practiced, you know, so I would know the hand positions and how to heal somebody that was sitting in a chair and that kind of stuff. And, um, but when I got attuned for Reiki 2, it was a whole nother ballpark. Um, it made me extremely sensitive, uh, to energy. Um, it opened up some kind of almost a psychic sense. Um, and I, I know probably sounds a little weird and, but, um, I, I felt what was going on with the energy more. I felt what was going on with my hands. Um, I usually uh, let the energy go through my crown chakra, like on the top of your head. Uh, you will feel the energy come out your hands. You will feel healing energy come out your feet. Um, it's a really interesting feeling. It's, it's like a tingling feeling, if that makes any sense. I'm actually glad that you mentioned that you at least feel something in your feet. I'm, I'm glad I do have a note here. I was going to ask you about the feet because, you know, I did do a little bit of cursory research before tonight's show. And, uh, let me see, where was it? Um, uh, some of the people who talk about this, you know, they, they mention the heat coming off of your hands. They can feel, you know, so someone's having work done on them. They, they typically will report that they can feel the heat from your hands. Um, and, Obviously, I'm coming at this from a completely skeptical position. Yeah. So, my answer to that, if somebody were to say that to me, my 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 go-to answer would automatically be, well, because your hands have a shit ton of nerves. There's only one place in your body, well, except for the lips. There's one other place in the body that has more nerve endings than your hands and your feet. Right. You, this is your genitals. So. Because your hands and your feet are known to have so many nerve endings, they also have an ample supply of blood, typically more than the rest of your body. And so it's no surprise that you would feel the heat or warmth from somebody who has their hands on you or even near you. May I interject? Of course. You can cut me uh, off anytime. I'll just shut right up. If you, you just want to you no, run I'll, me I'll, up, that, that's I'll fine. I'll be polite about this. Come no, on. No, go ahead. Um... No, it, it's, um, people say that everybody's hands are hot. That's not necessarily true. Uh, sometimes your hands will be cold. Um, especially like to the client, the client may feel, um, <coughs> cold hands. They might feel warm hands. They'll, they may feel a number of things. They may even feel like weeping. Um, it's, it's, uh, 
sort of like how it is, but I mean, not everybody's hands are going to give off heat. Um, Does that make sense? Well, uh, certainly there are times when we, we have a, a reduced blood flow where we do have cold, clammy hands. Um, it's not guaranteed that everybody's hands are going to be any particular temperature at any given moment. That's true. But the energy still works whether your hands are cold or hot. Does that make sense? At least that's what I was taught. Okay. Um, now, this might be a silly question, but especially considering that you did mention feet, um, can you use your feet? Um, have you ever heard of I'm just curious. Have you ever heard I of I haven't such heard of that uh, at all. Maybe if there was someone who didn't have hands would use their feet. That's, yeah, well, that's kind, but I, I kind don't of what really I really know. I really don't know how to answer that question. Uh, all I know is that the energy travels through your feet, and you can feel it travel through your body, through your feet, and uh, sort of how you know it's working right. Okay. Um, so I guess one of my biggest questions is, how do you know anything is working? Hmm. Well, you don't necessarily know. Um, you you can feel the energy run through you. Um, but if if it's working on the client, it's just goes to the client and it does what it's supposed to do. Like, you're just a conduit. You don't make anything happen. You're not physically healing somebody. The energy is. Does that make sense? Not, not really. Okay. Well, that's what I was taught. So, I mean, I, I know that you've mentioned that in, in email, and I really just want to try to rehash some of the conversation that we've had in our email so that my audience sure. is a little bit up to speed on where you and I are in our conversation. Um, now, I know that you've said that, that you don't do anything, that you're a conduit for this energy. Um, so are, is there any sort of test at all that can be performed to show that there is such an energy that, that you're talking about? Well, actually, there are is sort of a test um i in my searches which i've got like a pile of paper here like printed out and stuff but i ended up bumping into this uh james oshman uh who is a physicist he has a phd and um he had some things to say about reiki and energy healing but if you're doing hands-on healing like it takes um about 6.8 hertz um to heal bones for instance as he was saying i hope i got the numbers right so it's a measurable amount from your hands that comes out when you're working on somebody like at a distance from say 18 inches or a little closer that that measurable amount and I cannot remember the specific instrument what that was called but um, your hands give off electricity of about 7 hertz um, well if your hands are giving off electricity that, that can be measured in a couple of different ways um, it can be measured through a uh, magnetism and it can be measured directly if there is in fact electricity coming off of your hands that can be measured through an amp meter or a voltmeter directly so Vib vibration yeah and, and hertz um, so anyway it was very interesting I watched almost all of his videos are all the videos he didn't have his own videos but it was videos about him on different channels in fact he's on facebook and i tried to contact him to see if i could get him on the show um and he saw my message but i haven't received a reply yet so i thought it would have been interesting to have a physicist come on but um anyway so that's 
my answer for that. Um, so the email that you sent me oh, when I was pressing you for like evidence and proof, um, I'm not hundred percent sure if, if I, what I said back to you, I think I may have, um, when I tried to check the links and the sources on, on that particular, um, uh, link that you left me. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a, a fairly large list. I may even want to actually do a screen share and, and go through that, some of sure. it, with you. Um, but if, I'm not sure. Did I tell you, did I reply back? That <sighs> yes, you replied back and, and you said most of it was hoo-hoo. Most of it was like Reiki practitioners and stuff. Yeah. But some of it wasn't. And if you looked up the people and their names like i saw several lists not just that list and you would find um studies i don't know if i printed out that one study but there was one study um that just had a couple of women's names on it and turned out that they were both nurses um i think it was at boston hospital and they wrote um, an article, and that particular article was the one I told you about. I went to a site where it was supposed to be, and it cost like $49 to print it out. So um, I joined the site, and basically you had to say if you were a practitioner or a doctor or something like this. And you couldn't print anything out unless you paid for it. So I declined to print it out because I really can't afford 49 bucks an article. But I did print out some things. And there was various various things in what I printed out in, in the list of stuff that I found um, that sort of went both ways. That some things um, were pro... There was an answer, and yes, the healing did work. Uh, and then there were others that, you know, basically or the opposite um in one of my replies did i mention that as i was searching for uh some of those resources that were in that link that you gave me as i started examining going through the list of resources one of them in particular was not only a ricky practitioner but also led me to their personal website where they also sold lawnmower engines and a bunch of <laughs> well no he didn't mention that but that's kind of funny um yeah i'm sure there were some that were just reiki practitioners so that email with the link that you gave me was pretty much a website that just had a giant list of other people in the in the practice who were sharing their website banners it's really it seemed like that's all Some that was. Of it was the first i think it was the first article um in that list and i might be wrong because i i looked up several lists but the first article i believe it was either that list or another list was of the two nurses at boston hospital who wrote the article that i couldn't access but I've accessed other articles, and um, I don't know whether it's from that list or elsewhere. But yeah, <laughs> that's pretty bad. That uh -huh. shouldn't have been on that list. You know, I mean, there should have been something more medical on that list. So I didn't yeah. see anything medical, and I searched nearly a dozen of those links that were on that <laughs> on that particular uh, web page, the link that you had given me. So it was a bunch of dead ends that took me to anything but the information that I was looking for. <clears throat> Sorry. So um, other than that, do you have any other information or know where we can go and find some other information that might provide us with some sort of peer review, uh, anything at all? Well, mostly the best ones. Um, the best thing that I found was um, the James Oshman stuff. And um, he was speaking about 
quantum physics and stuff, which was amazing. I just was so into that. But peer review, I mean, as far as peer review goes, you know, um, there's a lovely article about science in the human energy field uh, by James Oshman. And uh, he's, um, I think it was put out by Reiki magazine. So he was interviewed by William Rand, who is a very famous Reiki practitioner teacher and has his own school. And um, the the, um, article is excellent. Um, And there's a lot of articles in that magazine, of course, which are Reiki practitioners and stuff like that. Um, But I think it gives you an idea of Oshman's uh, views. And um, let me see what this was. um, Volume 1, Issue 3, Winter of 2002. But at that time... Um, he didn't mention that it could be measured, um, the hands-on healing or partly above the body, uh, could you say, not right on top of the body. As I previously mentioned, I got that information from a later um, um, video off YouTube. But um, let's see. There's a lot, um, a lot of articles I have here. I don't know whether you want to call it peer review or what, but I mean, a lot of them are from well, people who have PhDs. I'm talking about actual science papers, published scientific papers, peer-reviewed scientific papers, not articles. I'm, I'm interested in the science more than just anecdotal story time. Do you know what I mean? This is science. Okay, if it's real science, then somebody, and you're talking about people with PhDs that are talking about this stuff, then somewhere somebody yeah. should have some, uh, some you know, published scientific papers. It's very difficult to find a lot of it. Um, and the reason being, okay, is part of the problem with peer-reviewed stuff like that is, you know, it's not like regular medicine. You know, traditional medicine gets far more um, money to do research. And um, so uh, you're, you're looking at a situation where there's not a lot of funding for this research. I mean, I'm a Reiki practitioner, but I don't know how to do research. You know, I wouldn't know the first thing about it uh, as far as, you know, some scientific experiments. Um, There was one scientific experiment that was done by a person who was into physics. And uh, I'm not sure where that is about. He um, tested mice. And um, what they did is they had these mice and they injected them with breast cancer cells. And uh, so they did a... actually four controlled experiments with mice. And he had a practitioner put his hands on the cage and send energy to the mice, okay? Now, um, and then there was mice that had no healing, no energy sent to them. So the mice that had energy, actually both groups of mice that they had these, um, sores which came up I think they were cysts and they turned black and exploded and the Reiki mice those cysts healed up and um, they they were healed and the other group of mice that didn't get the Reiki did not heal and they all died and um, so you're saying Reiki healed cancer in mice yes Yes, according to that experiment, but they did um, that experiment four times and then they duplicated it um, again and it did the same thing. But the thing is, they never took it and tried anything on humans. And, you know, how are you going to try that on humans? You don't want to inject people with breast cancer cells. 
You don't have to. There's millions of people with breast cancer. Well, you know, I mean, that's more like a controlled thing. So. Well, I can see how it might be tough because in order to have a control group and a scientific experiment, you can't, you can't be, you know, using other types of drugs or chemo or any other type of traditional medicine. You have to use the Reiki only. And of course, yeah. somebody, a human being with breast cancer, you're opening yourself up to a huge lawsuit if it doesn't work, right? So, well, I wouldn't even consider that. I, I feel that uh, Reiki should be used in conjunction with traditional medicine. Uh, well, okay. Maybe it should be. But that would eliminate the control group and nobody could say what's worked and what didn't work. Well, that's what they did on the mice. Okay, I would very much like to see that study. Um, uh, I have a mess of papers here. <laughs> I'm trying to find, as you're speaking, I'm trying to find the, the original email. I can't find it unless it was in... An, another batch. Um, it may not be in that particular one. Am I screen sharing right now? Can you see what I'm? You can't. No, I can't see what no, you're doing. No, no, you're not screen yeah, sharing. Yeah, I've got, I've got a bad. Yeah, I did that on purpose. I I reduced the. Uh, I shouldn't be uh, turn it into a black screen as much as possible. I didn't really want to share all this email stuff. Um, but I am trying. I've got a batch here of thirteen exchanges. I'm, I'm wondering if it's in that one or if it's in a different batch where you gave me the link. To uh, all that here, stuff. No, here this it is. may be. Here it is. Found a good article. Here it is. I think I found it. Um, yeah, there it is. Let me just open this up in a fresh tab, and then I'll share that with the class. Okay. That should, that should do. All right. This is what you sent me, I think. Well, yeah, that should be what you sent me. Let me go back over here and open this up. All right. Oh, it should be a display capture. Um, yeah, just well, the experiment was back. done by a physicist called Bengston, B-E-N-G-S-T-O-N. I'm pretty sure it's William Bengston. And I am looking through my stuff. I have two articles by William Benson. Oh. Oh. oh, here it is. Go kart. It's go kart engines. <laughs> that's what it is. Oh, and that's funny. This well, is this is a Ruth A. Golush or Golush. <laughs> um, and when I look at, let me see, KJ52, um, 7th Avenue sold direct, eBay, fantastic prices. Well, uh, my apologies Amazon, for that. CBD. I, you, I did not look those all up. Project 86. Until afterwards. Sponsored search. Great deals. Compare prices. Another product sponsored. Okay, what else? Day of Fire. What is this? Uh, sponsored link. Sponsored linked. Day of Fire sold direct on eBay. So, I think this is the one of, the, and this isn't the one that you sent me directly. And I, I don't know why. It, this is weird. I don't know why it took me here. Um, I well, maybe you clicked on something. That was on the site or something. I'm still trying to look for that particular article. I have oh, oh, wait a, a couple of things about William Bengston and energy Here healing. Here it is. Sorry. I opened up the link that I sent back to you. That was the person who was selling go-kart engines. So here's the link, and I should be sharing with everybody on the live stream now. Um. Here's the link that you actually sent me. Uh, Reiki Pages, James Deacon's Reiki Pages. Yeah. Medical research and other papers on Reiki. Um, well, I couldn't find any medical research, and I did look through not all, but the, this is a pretty sizable list. Can I can I interject here? Go ahead. Sure. Uh, E-Man uh, has dropped a link into the um, okay. chat here 
for the for the study with the mice, the Bangston study. Okay. Thank you. Mice and cancer. Yeah. Thank okay. thank you very much, E Man. We appreciate that. Okay. I have two other two other papers, but unfortunately I've got a inch and a half thick of articles here, so sorry if I'm I'm having a dither with this. Um yeah. Yeah, so the Bankston thing, I mean, there was the first time I read it, it felt like it didn't it wasn't successful. But then I read um other articles with William Bengston and it did seem that there was that that did happen. So, you know, I I think it did happen, but I think there needs to be controlled studies for humans. And there's really not that much available, at least online, um, that I could find. I did find more uh, some control studies uh, from China uh, with energy healing, different forms of energy healing, and um, you know. But basically, they're saying, you know, it may help. Um, it may help. Um, anyway, so. I was just looking at some videos of Sheldrake. Of Rupert, um, Rupert Sheldrake? Yes. But unfortunately, I didn't find much on Reiki. Um, the, the main things that I, the main things that I found was, that was profound to me was the, um, was the uh, Oshman videos and um you know there was a lot of talk about quantum physics scalar waves subtle energies um a lot of people said they couldn't be measured but they can be measured and uh that's sort of that um, but the what the gist that i get is you've got Articles with medical doctors, a lot of medical doctors, that are saying this is a lot of bunk. And then you have other doctors, but most of them are PhDs that say there's something to this stuff. Um, and that, and Oshman says it works, and he's very pro energy types of healing. Um, so, um let's see this is a little bit interesting here um i'll just read the abstract energy healing or healing with intent is a complementary and alternative medicine therapy reported to be beneficial with a wide variety of conditions we are developing a delivery technology for a method previously tested in mouse models with solid tumors the benson model or, uh, the bengston model independent of the presence of a healer the goal of the study was to assess whether stored or recorded energy has an impact on breast cancer cells in vitro using energy charged energy charged cotton and electromagnetic recording of healers practicing the method expression of genes involved in cancer and, inf and inflammation pathways was measured by quantitative reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction uh, treatment of cells using energy charged cotton resulted in statistically significant changes. Oh, I sure would like to know what they mean by energy charged cotton. Uh, oh, I can tell you what that means. Go ahead. I mean, as a practitioner, what you would do if you're energy charged something, you could take an inanimate object or you could take your food or your water or you know whatever I mean I charge crystals you know but people are into that I'm not like you know into crystal healing but some people are and you put your hands over in them and you direct the energy toward whatever it is that you're working with so that was cotton right Um, okay, I, I heard what you said. I just don't know what that means. It means you are channeling energy or 
the conduit for the energy that flows through your hands to the cotton. So you're sending the energy to the cotton. That's what it means. I would like to know what kind of energy are we talking about exactly, and, and how is that energy measured? Because earlier you said electricity, so that's an energy that we can all know. We all know. We can see it. I we can measure electrons. it. Electrons. Uh, I think uh, Oshman said it was electrons specifically. Uh -uh. Like he's into this grounding thing. Like if you go outside and you're walking on the earth, the earth has electrons. So you're picking up electrons. You can be healed by electrons. And um, I saw a video of another guy um, who was saying that uh, the, the Hertz is much higher to heal tumors or things like that. And I'm trying to think what his name is. Um, I have so much stuff written down, I can't find it. Uh, but, and I just only watched that today. And he had some kind of um, fancy named machine that he did this with. The machine was very expensive. Um, so I was reading the comments and um, in the in the uh, video, and um, you know, people were suggesting other ways to do that but Oshman is for the grounding thing and um, and that's how you know he's talking about it protecting you from you know this um, electric mess that we have going with uh, 5G and uh, all that stuff stuff from your telephones and computers and stuff well this is this is a I got something to say here that might be just barely slightly off topic because I know you're not talking about prayer per se, but this article that I'm reading that uh, Iman Pudama dropped that I have on my screen right now, uh, just below the abstract that I just read, in, in the introduction paragraph, says virtually all recorded societies report that certain individuals appear to have the ability to heal. Oftentimes this healing has been associated with the spiritual disciplines of one sort or another. And the, excuse me, Pardon me. And the healers themselves have sometimes been accorded a special status within the culture. Healers have utilized various methods of practice, including laying on of hands, prayer, and induced altered states of consciousness, to name a few. Now, what I have to say, what I know about prayer, that actual scientific studies have been performed, and I am aware of real scientific control studies have been done to see if there's anything to the notion of the efficacy of prayer. And it fails. And not only does it fail, but it actually seems to have a reverse effect. And they did a study on something like, I think it was 600 uh, heart patient, heart surgery patients. And they broke them into three groups. One group knew that they were being prayed for, the other group were being prayed for, but they were not aware that they were being prayed for. And the third group, the control just wasn't being prayed for. And the group that knew that they were being prayed for did worse. Than, yeah, I heard about that than study. Than the other two. The researchers suspected it might have been due to some sort of performance anxiety. Because when you know you're being prayed for, you know, you might have some anxiety as to well, gee, if I don't get healed, then, you know, my friends and family are going to lose their faith, you know, all that, that sort of anxiety. So, so that's, that's the only, you know, conclusion that they could come up with. But the bottom line is that the prayer, the prayer, the group that knew that, that, that did not know that they were being prayed for had no more greater success or healing rate than the other group that was not being prayed for. And the group mm -hmm. that knew that they were being prayed for did worse than the other two groups. Yeah, but Reiki isn't prayer. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> prove it. <laughs> it's not. I don't. I mean, I, I, I don't mean, have if, to pray to do Reiki. If I want to pray, no, I, I understand. Pray. I no, pray no, for myself, no, maybe. But no, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying that it's exactly the same. But if there was anything to this idea of prayer, then wouldn't that literally be the same kind of? 
energy being somehow transferred or or induced by the human beings with, because with their intention because that's what Reiki is it's an intention right you this is all about your intention and your 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 goal and purpose to to send some sort of healing energy right well yeah but it's different than prayer you know and it's not not religious how is it different than prayer well um prayer is a verbal thing um no not always well it's verbal in your head or a verbal in your mouth uh it could be thought forms yeah but uh reiki is physically sending energy that's a little bit different because i mean when you describe that you can uh, i don't what did you call it third level or level three where level you, three is a teacher. Okay, so level two that you can send Reiki energy to someone in Bangladesh, right? There, there's no limit mm -hmm. to the distance. So how is that different than prayer? If if somebody is from a far distance away from you and you're sending them energy, how is that different than somebody else with the same sort of intention to send love and healing power, invoking God or you know the Almighty Power of the Universe, whatever that may be in their own minds? They still have the same intention to send healing energy, right? Can Can I interrupt here? Sure. Um, I would like to sort of address that. Okay, when you are praying, you're asking some entity uh, or another to intercede. Whereas with Reiki, you are plugging into a flow of energy <laughs> and moving it through you with intent. These are really two different things. Thank you. Yes, I didn't put it in words right, but no, that's all right. <laughs> the thing that's really interesting, um, Aaron, is uh, when I send energy distant, people feel it. They tell me they feel it, um, and that really blows me away because I never thought anybody would be able to feel healing energy from far away um but uh you know i've worked on a bunch of different people and with a bunch of different issues and everyone pretty much says they can feel the energy you know um but it's not like i have i, I don't believe i have any power that's different than anybody else a lot of people like say they have these magical powers or something it's not magic it's sort of like uh, amy says tapping into universal energy and directing it toward uh toward whomever you're going to uh heal or send healing to you know i make a mistake saying my healing somebody it's really that you're just sending the energy the energy's doing the healing and um you know there's different types of reiki i just do the plain usui um but there's a whole bunch of different types of reiki that have grown out of usui and some of them ma manipulate the skin and you know uh when you're doing this hands-on stuff and um usui does not manipulate the skin so a lot of times people will say that you cannot be harmed by reiki if you're manipulate manipulating the skin you could harm somebody the method that i practice um you don't manipulate the skin and you can also do it hands off so that you're not hurting anybody I, I, again can i I'd like ahead, Amy. interject the thought okay now Aaron, we know that in the you can plasma... Call me, you can call me Rufus. Rufus, sorry. Force of habit. No, I, I know, but we, we all came to the conclusion yeah. that we're going to stop now, doing I'm, that. I, I'm going to try to remember. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, what I would like to point out... Okay, we, we are aware of the plasma universe theories, correct? Yeah. And... This is a field of electromagnetic energy that's uh, coalescing and spreading out throughout the whole universe. 
And I strongly suspect that what Reiki is, is tapping into that field focusing that energy and allowing it to flow in the direction that one wants it to. Mm -hmm. That is, that is my guess. Well, I don't, I certainly don't deny that we are alive and living in a virtual sea or a soup of all kinds of different energies and that we ourselves are electrical energetic beings of sorts what I'm wondering is how we can test that this method is effective. And one of the things that I asked Allison in email um, was I was trying to postulate a way that we could test or, or try to create some sort of control for testing. And I, I, I think I suggested something like sending a healing energy to someone that doesn't know that they're getting it. Because in my email exchange, I talked a lot about how the placebo is actually a real thing and it's actually used in medicine because it's up yes. to it's up to 30 percent effective and so i mean if it works with zero harm then why not do it right so placebo is in fact employed in medicine and it's a real thing it doesn't necessarily it's not going to heal bones or regrow limbs but it'll certainly make you feel better and if it feels good do it i say right and, and I kind of feel the same way with Reiki, it, whether it's real or whether it's imagined, if it makes you feel good, fucking do it. I don't care. What I want to know is what kind of energy, how do you know that you're manipulating energy? How can we test that you are in fact doing anything effective for someone else at a distance? And one of the things that I mentioned in our email was to send energy to someone who doesn't know. And if I remember correctly, Allison replied that the recipient has to ha give you permission to do it. Is, yes. that, is that correct? Yeah. One, one needs consent. Okay. All right. Stop right there because two things come to mind when it comes to consent. Actually, three. Number one, when somebody has to give you consent, that means that they're aware that you're doing it. And if they're aware that you're doing it, that you have not ruled out placebo. So you just destroyed your control group. Number two... As I did a little bit of precursory research before tonight's show, um, I heard from one or two uh, Reiki masters say that you, and Allison said, you know, they were doing it on mice. Somebody said you can do it to your pets, and yep. some, somebody said you can do it to babies. Well, um, you can't exactly get consent from your pet or baby. Yes, you can. I, um... I had consent, obviously. I had, um, I used to go, I, let me tell you. Well, how, no, how, tell me, how you, how do you get consent from a baby? They'll be attracted to you and want that. Just like What about a baby animal. in Bangladesh? <laughs> well, you know, the only way, other way you can do that is go to the higher self, which you probably don't get. Uh, it's going to sound like woo-woo, and um, you ask the higher self for, for, for permission. and Or you can say to the universal energy, uh, or wherever it comes from, uh, you say, um, I'd like to send this energy to so-and-so, and if it's not accepted, please send it to where it will do the highest good. You know, and I do that sometimes, especially if that's that I feel is called for. But for the most part, I'll ask permission. Most part, um, people seek me out, but dogs have sought me out. And I had one dog who had a hip problem that was some friends of my dog. And uh, whenever I went over there, it would back up into me wanting to, me to put my hands on its hips. And um, so, yeah, that's how I know I had permission from a dog. Now, I went to another person's house who was a friend of a friend who had another old dog who had some issues with uh, moving hip issues, leg issues, and that dog did the same thing. So, yeah, I think dogs, cats instinctively know I mean, I had my cat. My cat would be hanging all over me when I was doing Reiki. Um, and uh, 
they instinctively know and they come seek you out. So, I mean, it's not scientific proof, but that's no, the way it is with me. Well, no, it's not. It's it's anecdotal proof. And although I appreciate your time and and your your stories and your explanations, it's it's not. I don't ex, I don't accept anecdotes as proof. They're interesting and they're worthy of consideration, but I I don't I don't consider them evidence or proof. And two anecdotes, and I've said this before regarding uh, other types of. Uh, I might have said it to you in the email that. An anecdote is not evidence, and multiple anecdotes don't add up to evidence either. Well, that's fine, but that's what I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say as far as anecdotes go, they will allow me to adjust my probabilities marginally. And the greater the number, the closer I will get to a high probability if they're all consistent. But, yeah, you're right. It's not like scientific proof. No, no, it's not. But, it's, but, it's, it's what has occurred within what I've done with practicing. All, all it does, if you had a pile of stories and anecdotes, all it would really do, in my mind, as a skeptic, would it would at least lend credence that it's something to look at. It's, it's at least enough to say, hey, pay attention to this, look at it, if you're interested, you know, it's least worthy of your time to investigate. That's all I, it is. I haven't seen any studies on animals at all. Um, the studies that I did see, um, basically, um, that Reiki is good for pain management. Um, it can lower your blood pressure. Um, I've worked on myself and it's work, lowered my blood pressure. Anecdote again. Um, meditation. And, meditation does that all the time. Yeah. And, uh, and really, it's very similar. It's very similar. I mean, you get in the zone. It's like sort of meditation. And because um, I've done both. And um, let's see what I was going to say. Um, it, it, uh, I'm sorry lost my train of thought that's okay um but yeah i mean it's slightly better than placebo effect i think um it helps reduce the heart rate um let's see any anybody like like uh it helps to reduce stress anxiety uh and depression uh, things like this, but you know what I've seen in the research that I've done through the articles that I've looked through. Um, you get positive on on those things, and then some people say that that doesn't happen, and some people say that may happen. So you're getting all different answers, um, even though some of the tests are somewhat controlled. And some of the controls um, studies that I've seen, too, I, I have questions about them as to whether they're really scientifically uh, together or not, or whether they're following the proper scientific process. Um, so uh, that's sort of where I'm at on it. Um, now, says, I mean... says I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. That's all right. I mean... They're using it in operating rooms now. Now there's uh, some kind of uh, medical Reiki, uh, certified medical Reiki master, that where people are going into surgery, uh, you know, that's a new field that's coming out. But oftentimes Reiki's done in hospitals, and there's like a really lot of hospitals, I think. There's like 800 hospitals that use Reiki in the hospital. Um, the nurses, a lot of the nurses, you know how like they have to take those courses to like recertify or get their yeah. certify up to date? They're taking Reiki courses. Um, so they are applying Reiki to their patients. And uh, also they have volunteers. And oftentimes at hospice, they have volunteers. You know, as far as... Um, placebo effect 
Uh, I'm down with that too. If it's just pl placebo effect, that's fine. I just think the really odd thing is, I mean, to me it's odd, is that somebody far away would feel that. Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's odd at all, especially if you're telling me that the person far away. Um, this is see, I'm really hung up on this. You have to have permission thing. I know. Because first of all, in this experiment, and, and by the way, as a quick side note, I'm, as I'm reading this, this article here, it does say here that in the mid to late 1970s, uh, Bankston began looking uh, to follow Grad's experimental approach and healing and moved into uh, systemic experimental work with animals. So this study with the rats is uh, 50 years old. So I would yeah. certainly like to see something a little bit more recent. And if there was any real success, measurable success, if this was a real experiment and not somebody trying to pull the wool over somebody else's eyes, maybe to sell a book or whatever, there's all kinds of reasons for people with PhDs to falsify their, their tests and their experiments and, the, and their results. This happens all the time in science. It's a sad fact. Okay? Yeah, but, I agree with you there. So right? the other thing is... When it comes to this particular experiment with the mice, and you're saying that you have to have, um, you have to have um, permission. How how do, how does one get permission from a mouse, particularly a mouse that you intentionally injected with cancer cells? Honestly, I don't know. And whether it was specifically Reiki used, I'm not sure. They said it was, but then I read in other spot in other places that. Um, it was a method of healing that was taught to the person who did the healing. Uh, so, you know, that's even, um, you know, a little uh, contradictory. Okay, so my other question regarding having to have permission, when you said, um, you said something about that you would send, uh, God, I think what was, we were talking about babies or something, and, and, and you said, that you would ask, you you'd ask the universal energy or something, if if you could get permission, and if you couldn't get permission, that you said that to just send it to where it was needed most. So could you tell me that I again? I asked the universe to send the energy where it's to where it's needed most. Yeah. Okay. So wouldn't I that normally const... most people don't do that, but I do that. Okay. So wouldn't that constitute a situation where you're sending energy to someone where you didn't have permission? Mm, yeah, it that would sort of screws up your permission theory thing. I mean, it's how does that really work? <laughs> theory, you're supposed to ask the person's permission, but yeah, I mean, it's it's odd, and yes, I agree with you. It's it it uh, messes that up. I I could say that perhaps it doesn't because there may be people that are asking for help from whatever source and if they're asking for help from whatever source and that's where it would do the most good because it's been asked then that for, might constitute permission yes <laughs> through universal exactly. laws of some kind yep okay. maybe I mean, okay damn you damn you amy i'm sorry <laughs> I, you blew my I, whole debunk <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> well, you know, it, it is a weird subject, and I'll, most I'll be, people really haven't heard seconds. about it. I'll be back in a few seconds. <sighs> okay. Yeah, Amy, that, that's a great way to put it. Well, you know, I do know that lots of people who are hurting or otherwise in, in a bind will we'll just ask the universe, please help me. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Technically, that's permission, I would think. Yeah, it is. But that's, uh, I agree with you. But, I mean, as far as Rufus is concerned with um, the methodology of, you know, just point on asking for permission. Yeah, I mean, it is a little weird. You got to admit it's a little weird. It's not, like, technically normal. True, but then again, unless it's an emergency, the doctor has to get permission, right? Yeah. You know, if you're mm, not if you're out, unconscious and he's got to save your life. That's why I said it, unless it's an emergency. That's yeah, but he's got to sign it. You got to sign the papers, you know. 
Well, if you're unconscious, you ain't signing no papers. Yeah. That's right. But I mean, if you're conscious, you are. Yeah. But if you're not conscious and you they determine you need help, They'll they, help will, you. they will go ahead and do it without yep. your permission, without your signature. <laughs> Lanny. Satan says if it feels good, do it too, also or do it. Too. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> people use guides and oftentimes now this is really weird. Um, like some people were using like Lucifer and Satan as a guide. So like there used to be like Catholic nuns would do Reiki. And um, so anyway, um. The Catholic Church forbid Catholics to do Reiki uh, because, you know, it was too far out and, you know, people were using uh, guides that they didn't consider were good. So um, there's something to that. So basically, um, Reiki is verboten for a Catholic. <laughs> I'm not Catholic. I'm, I'm, I have no doubt that fundamentalist Christians have a real problem with it. In fact, I was reading some of the comments under under some of the videos that I was looking at before today, to, before we went on live here as I was doing a little bit of research. I was watching some proclaimed Reiki masters explain it and watched a couple of people go through their methods and do it to other people. And... Um, some of it was pretty laughable, and even though these people were as serious as a heart attack as they explained it and they went through the whole process, they were as serious as can be. It's just that uh, maybe they just weren't very good. I, I don't know. One person in particular, and thank you, Eamon uh, Padama. I've got that uh, new article, this uh, research paper. I've got it up for anybody who wants to read this, and I'll go over that in a minute. Um and by the way, Influence Freedom and Blue Blood, if you guys are still hanging out, I'm going to be opening this up in a few minutes. You guys can come and join us anytime. Um, you guys, if you guys want to pop in uh, literally any moment now, just feel free to come on in. You guys both have the links in your Hangout pages and our private chat conversations. Um, so this one woman, uh, there's a video that I was watching as she explained the process, and she had a, um, a client this young lady who came in and the woman said, well, first what I'll do is I'll ask, you know, why are you here? Blah, blah, blah. And the woman said, well, I'm, I'm here to, uh, I've got some stress and I want to relax. She said, I've also been having some stiffness and soreness in my right calf. And so the woman given the, the video explanation, the quote unquote Reiki master, she's doing her explanation. She has her client lie down and she says, the first thing I do is I, I, she, I forget the word she used. Um, she said, um, uh, God, what did she say? Sensing. So she said, I use my non-dominant hand, and I, I first I go over the body at a distance, usually six inches or so, and I sense uh, if there's any other areas that need like extra attention. Okay. So she goes through this process, and she quiets, and, and she's quiet for a moment. You just sort of watching her do her thing. And she's waving her hand over, and she stops, and she pauses, and she moves, and she pauses, and she moves, and she goes, okay, then I go down, I go through the chakras, and then I go down the legs. And I found this pretty hilarious, and, and I'm not, I'm really not trying to shit on you, but this was pretty bad. Um, it's called scanning. Scanning, scanning, sensing, okay, fine. Um, so she scanned this person, and then she began her practice, where she started at the top. And she said, I, I usually go right for the, go, go to the third eye chakra. She mentioned chakras and working with the chakras. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I noticed was that she skipped the crown chakra. She went right for the third eye chakra. She skipped the crown chakra. Um, and then um, after, let me see, what was it? And, and as she explained, um, she had to ask her client again, which calf it was. So not only did she not remember what her client told her as, as far as being the right calf, but her quote-unquote sensing or her quote-unquote scanning didn't detect anything that would have gave her a clue as to which calf it was. I thought that was pretty funny as well. Well, that's a little weird. Um, uh, first position um, for the hand placement is over the eyes. Not not the third eye, but it's it's the eyes. 
Um, and that's how I was taught. So I don't know what kind of Reiki this person was doing. And yes, you do do a body scan. Um, and what you're looking for, and usually when you're sensing an issue with pain or something, the, the uh, body throws off heat when it's in pain. So, you know, um, other people who are, say, perhaps, um, and, you know, this is not necessarily me, but other people who claim or are more psychically sensitive, um, they will see things. Uh, I only experienced that once on somebody's body, and that was a bizarre, very unusual situation. But, um, but yeah, but mostly what you will feel, you'll feel heat. And if she was worth her salt and this woman was actually having pain, she would have felt heat radiate from that red leg. So. Um, well. If, you're looking for inflammation, basically. Sure. If you have a genuine physical injury, then the body naturally opens up blood vessels in order to heal itself. And the increased blood flow will show literally you can you can you can test this with an infrared camera you can see sure. that there's a hotter area on the body it's not like a magical energy it's simply increased blood flow yeah, so but, a person but who you're is not sensitive giving energy at that point no no i'm just saying like uh, yeah. if you were scan, quote unquote scanning if a person who had really sensitive hands could even without touching could literally detect a little hotter area some people i I'm, i have no doubt could easily detect that yeah yeah. So that's what that's supposed to be. So yeah, that was kind of weird. Um, that particular person. But you got to realize that, you know, a lot of people that are doing Reiki are not doing Usui Reiki either. And the other issue is, you know, my teacher said to me that um, if you mess up on the hand positions, because of certain hand positions for certain parts of the body, and um, if you mess up on the hand positions, it doesn't mean that the healing doesn't, you just continue with the healing. It doesn't mean that, that the healing isn't working or that because you didn't do it in a particular order, it's not going to well, work. Well, well, what does it mean then? It means you forgot to do that section of the body. But Reiki flows, the energy flows through the entire body no matter where you're at. Does that make sense? Well, what doesn't make sense is hand positions. And if you and your your teacher said if you screw up your hand position, then basically it doesn't matter. So what's the point of hand positions if it doesn't matter? It's just um, the way that it's taught, you know. But if you had forgotten one, you know, you might go back and do that. Or like if you got to somebody's arm, say, and they're having pain there and you sensed heat there, then you might do that point on their arm and uh, not necessarily not do one of the hand positions, but you might go out of order. Um, and that wouldn't affect the healing. Um, so... Okay, so I've got two questions. I want to I digress. I want to go back. All the way back to the beginning, just briefly, when we were yeah. talking about attunement, and you mentioned that it was a ritual and that there were symbols involved. What kind of symbols are we talking about? Um, there are four symbols. Um, basically, for Reiki 1, there is the power symbol. Uh, there is What is that symbol? Well, you can easily look it up. I'm not okay. supposed right. to share the symbols, but they're all over the internet. Oh, okay. So um, it like basically tra looks secret? like <laughs> it's supposed to be, but <laughs> that's another story unto itself. Oh, I can't. Wait um, to it's hear basically that story. a it's a spiral <laughs> symbol, and um, the the next symbol sort of looks like a little dinosaur, and that's um emotional healing i kind of think it looks like godzilla and then there's the next one which is the uh that's for emotional healing and then the next one um 
for Reiki too. Um, that sort of looks like a pagoda, and so does the master symbol, but they're drawn a different way. Um, and so what will happen is in these attunements, you'll do uh, a certain number of the first symbol, say it's called Choku Ray, and you'll do that three times, and then you'll have to circle around the body and send energy a certain place and you know so you do these symbols in different patterns you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. um so so the the person receiving the attunement sits uh, on a chair and then you go about the person with the and do your symbols in a in in a certain uh arrangement uh in order to attune them does that make sense um, again, I hear your words, but n no, it doesn't actually make a lot of sense. The only thing I can imagine having any effect at all would be completely and utterly subjective. And it seems to me that it's really no different than have someone having a religious experience. I mean, uh... people in church report all the same things that you've described. All the tingling, the, the lightness... The, the some people literally get dizzy and pass out. Some people get emotional and tear up. Um, people have extreme physiological, uh, emotional, physical changes to their body, their state of mind during have, during the religious experience. I have never seen any any uh, Reiki situation where it looked like you know um, one of these evangelical meetings where people fall down. And uh, I think a lot of those are just fake. I can add to that. Many of, many of them are fake, and I have no doubt that maybe all of them are fake in, in, in a religious context. And hello, Blue Blood. Hey, everybody. Hi, Blue. Hi, Thank Allison. You. Hi, Amy. So um, real quick, let me ask you one more question, Allison, and then I want to I want to turn it over to Blue for a minute. Um I think you had mentioned something, and I did have a note I wanted to ask you about harm. Uh, you said you can't harm someone with Reiki. Is that what you said? Yeah, you really can't. Um, and, and it's not every type of Reiki, as I specified before. Um, some forms of Reiki manipulate the body as if it's massage. Um, in Usui Reiki, you don't do that. You lay your hands on gently or you're above the body or you're at distance. So you don't manipulate the body at all. So therefore, you cannot do any harm. Um, okay. Well, it would seem logical to me, and maybe I'm wrong. Obviously, I don't know shit about Reiki. But it would seem that if you can manipulate energy in a positive way, that you ought to be able to manipulate it in a negative way. And I can already see my chat. My conspiracy chat people talking about um, like uh, the, the sort of witchcraft and uh, sigil magic type things that are going on in the world with the elites, the way they run things. So maybe there maybe there is something to that. I don't know. But uh, well, you can respond to that and then I'll, I'll talk to Blue for a minute. Honestly, uh, in my opinion, the people that I've been around don't do that. Maybe there are people that do that type of thing who practice Reiki too. But no, I mean, as far as I go, I would never consider using negative energy on anybody. Um, I, I would think that would be the complete opposite of, of people trying to, to help people get better. I'm only asking what's possible. I, I'm not suggesting that you would even consider it. Um, no, I, I understand that. Well, you I think it's it. possible that if someone's practicing negative stuff and they mean harm to people, that they're that they can in different ways. Maybe not necessarily Reiki, but uh, that might be something they would do uh, if they were into that kind of thing. Um, you know, obviously, people do attempt to send negative vibes. And, uh, uh, you know, with sigil magic or servitors or whatever the hell they do, uh, I don't really know. Um, but they do send negative energy to people, obviously. I mean, even if you are angry at somebody, you're sending negative energy at people. Is that, you know, 
Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, I think it's possible, but I haven't seen anybody do it, and I wouldn't really like that. Oh. Um, Blue Blood, how you been, bro? Oh, all right up till today, I suppose. Yeah, you wanted to come in here. Something happened to your daughter? Yes, she still due to deliver her baby here in the next week or several days, and it was dead this morning. So she's at the hospital right now delivering oh, a dead no. baby. Oh, no. So oh, I'm, it may so, not, I'm sorry. so sorry. That's not why I wanted to come in because of that what happened today. I seen the title and uh and it was actually something when I called my mom and told her, it was something she said that I had to shut her down with and what she said was the reason why I wanted to come on tonight and we'll get into that later, I suppose. But uh yeah, as far as what you guys all been talking about, man, I got my own instances that I can relate to what you guys are talking about. Go well go ahead, man. Tell me a good story. Well, I'll start with the one that's currently going on with my hand. I, I stubbed my finger the other day, and I think I jumped, jammed something in under the cuticle in the corner of my nail on my on my uh, fingering hand of the guitar, my third finger. Anyway, so, of course, never never thought much of it. Get up the next morning, it's swollen right up. Well, now at the end of the week here, it's really swollen up. So while I was at the hospital, the nurse says to me, she says, ooh, it's, ooh your finger, that needs to be lanced. I said, I know, as soon as I get home, I'm going to lance it. So she says, well, I'll do it for you. And I said, okay. So they got my daughter all hooked up to the IV and everything, getting ready to do the forced labor thing with the drugs. And I go out, and I go out, and the nurse's station is actually right across, the, right in front of her door. And uh, I said, okay, you want to you lance this now? She says, well, I'll just give you the things, and you can do it yourself. <laughs> so I, I did it right in the bathroom while my daughter oh. was in there. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I said, yeah, because I told her, I said, you know what? I've lanced. I, I had a cyst on my side under my armpit years ago. I lanced it with a freaking exacto knife and squeezed the paste out of that. I said, I, I've lanced smashed fingers that swolled up like that before. Just grab a knife and give it a little yeah. hack and, so you can get the pus out. Anyway, so that was kind of funny that you guys got talking about that hot redness because right yeah. now my finger is hot, red, and throbbing. <laughs> but a better story than that, on the same hand, you know what it's like, Aaron, as a carpenter. Uh, uh-huh. I've smashed every finger on that, that hand, on my left hand. I've uh-huh. cut myself I don't know how many times. Yep. I've screwed my finger to a wall. Uh-huh. Here's I've, the best I've, one. I've drilled my finger with my with 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 a Phillip tip on my drill gun oh, when, it, yep. when it slips off of the drill head and it rains into your finger and while it's spinning, drilled right into my finger with the Phillips tip on my drill gun. Yeah. But check this that story out like now. Hell. Have you guys ever heard the? Uh, I don't know. They say that only one in a million people can cut off and have a digit cut off, and it will grow back. Have you heard um, that before? I, I only heard this. I only heard this a few years ago. By the way, this the saying I, that yeah, I'd never heard of that. <laughs> well, anyway, I heard it somewhere, and somebody said, or, or I read an article. I can't remember exactly what it was. That there there is many cases, but it's very rare that people can actually have a digit grow back after it's cut off. Well, guess what? That happened to me when I was about twenty years old. We uh, we built a cottage beside my mom's house, two doors down. And we were just getting ready to shingle the roof, and it got really windy, and I had rolled out a roll of tar paper, and I put my hand up on the roof on the tar paper to hold it while I cut it, and I just put a brand new blade in my knife, and if I didn't cut my fucking thumb off. Oh, wow. Right below the big knuckle. So wow. above, above, you know, that crease that's between your knuckle and your cuticle? Right yeah. there. Got it clean off. Never even felt it. So I stood up, so I stood up and I saw the blood shoot about five feet down the roof. And I'm like, oh, shit. And so I pushed it on my belt, told the guys, I said, I got to go. I just cut my thumb off, ran over to my mom's man. I just about passed out at her kitchen sink trying to run it under the water. So my brother went back up on the roof and got my thumb and we duct taped it back on. And I went back to work. And it grew. And, uh, uh, well, about two or two. Eh? Go ahead. No, finish. Yeah, it, it took months for it to come back. And I was 
I thought, well, I'm stuck with a stubby thumb now. But uh, two or three days later, it was getting all squishy and pulled it off, and the thumb was in there, and it was like the end of it. It was dead. It stunk. It was gross. Threw it in the garbage, and I was found. Okay, well, I got a stubby thumb. Big deal, right? I'll live with it. But I, I kept thinking to myself, you know, when I was a young kid, I thought, I'm my own master. Like, I can I can do a, heal myself and all this stuff. But anyway, later on in life, this happens. And I thought to myself, for, for those next few months, you're going to grow back. And it can grew back. No it was way. very painful. And I banged, I man, I banged. And it was scabbed over. It was ugly. And I kept hitting it, knocking scabs off. You know what it's like when you uh-huh. injure yourself. I've done yeah, it a thousand I, times. I, I cut the tip of but, my thumb off on a table saw. And, and yep, I, I know. And you, and you could see, too, clearly where it had cut the tip of the bone off in my thumb. Oh. And, uh <clears throat> but anyway, over the next probably three to six months, if it didn't keep growing back, I kept knocking scab off, and it was growing and growing. And the funny thing is, is it they they tell you if you cut your if you cut off your cuticle, your thumbnail, that you won't that won't grow back, right? I've know I know guys that have gouged it off or smashed it with hammer and knocked their whole thumbnail off, and it never did come back. Uh-huh. But mine freaking grew back all of it. And the funny thing is, is it changed my thumbprint. You, my thumbprint yeah, now has a has a circle where the last bunch of scabs were forming over the last few months, right? Wow. Really weird. Wow. So, that's, so that's your kind nail grew uh, back too. You got a wow. fingernail and everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, it's all wow. back. Yeah. Dude, really? Come on. Honest really? to goodness, yeah. Yeah, I can show you the scar. Oh yeah, and you can ask my mother, and you can ask my brother, and you can ask my stepfather, and who else was on the roof with us that day? <laughs> oh yeah, it happened for real. And it was very fucking painful, let me tell you. <laughs> but wow. the fact that it grew back, and you know, for many years, I didn't put much thought into it until, you know, here in the last bunch of years, I've been getting into this, you know, us as truthers, so to speak, we fucking look at everything. We think through everything. And I've been thinking about stuff like that a lot. Like, I think I really do have the power to heal myself. You know, I've always wanted one power, and that's that I could heal other people with just the sound of my voice or just oh. touch them. They don't even know. Oh, you know? I'm going to start calling you Deadpool from now on. <laughs> but here's, here's, here's another sidebar to that. My wife, fervent Christian, you cannot even <laughs> question her faith. Forget it. Her brother is a pastor. Now, I've already called her out and him out and everybody else, all these faith healers, because they've all been busted for just, it's, it's a scam. It's whatever it is. But anyway, so my wife has had Crohn's disease most of her life. And I said, well, if your brother's a faith healer and can heal, why the fuck hasn't he healed you then? Right? When your stepfather was dying in a bed in Mexico and he was at his side, how come he didn't heal him? Everybody prayed and prayed and prayed and Marty's the faith healer. Then why didn't, why didn't they save your stepfather, Roger? Right? Why didn't they save your cousin who, who got skin cancer at 21 years old and was dead in two months? Well, if you want to know how, how, how bad prayer, <clears throat> prayer fails, just go down to the children's hospital. Yeah, exactly. You want to see the size of the children's hospital here. I know because I helped build it. It's and and trust me, every, every single one of those parents is praying for their kids who are ultimately going to die, most of them. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm really looking at this energy healing because I look at the universe like this. If, if, the, if Earth has this this frequency of some point three, whatever it is, what have we added to this realm we live in here? What have we added? We've added all these man-made frequencies in our lifetimes, especially, right? Yeah. And now they're, and now they're getting to the point where they're turning into weapons. So I, I do think there is something to frequency energy, you know, yeah. whether it be healing or it causes damage because if they're saying all this 5g shit's going to cause fucking like, brain tumors and all this and you know the funny thing is I, I went back to driving truck locally here just lately to be home for my daughter and uh what am i seeing every woman that pulls up beside me in the truck they've either got their cell phone in hand and what do they do with it when they're done they stick it in their crotch mm-hmm. so, so i see bra. a lot I see a lot of pussy cancer coming up here in the near future if, if, <laughs> if, if this gets hurt. <laughs> a lot of... just, that's why I don't have a phone. I don't want that. You hear that, ladies? Don't be putting your cell phone in your crotch when you're driving. Your vagina is going to fall off. Yeah, but have you guys... <laughs> Actually, 
actually there's been people get cancer from having the radiation from the phone when they put their phone in their bra. Um, Rufus, you live in a pretty big city. I wondered if you've noticed this trend here. We have one of the, the best cancer centers in Canada right now. Yeah. What are we doing with that place? They're tripling the size of it. Why do we have to triple the size? Is there that much cancer coming down the pipeline? Here in the future, that we have to triple the size of these cancer centers now. Yes, and yes. of course, what what is the biggest fundraiser on this earth right now? Cancer, cancer, cancer for this, yeah. run for this, run for that, run for this. It's all a big money suck, if you ask me. They're not curing anybody. Yeah, they might be able to poison you into remission, but I don't hear see anybody being healed of cancer. Not from these that cancer way. Centers. No. No, not with Thanks that. You. No, they're, they're maintaining these people with a plethora of expensive drugs and treatments. Yeah, and they're making them terribly it's, sick, too. Yeah, so on to this faith healing and energy healing. I'm really, I've been diving into this energy healing a lot lately. Because like I said, if I could have one power in the world, it would be to fucking heal people. Because I'd walk into that cancer center and heal everybody. Get out, you're, you're good, you know. But no, where are all these healers going into these, these centers here? Between the Children's Hospital here, the Cancer Center, and the three big hospitals, and we just built another brand new hospital, and that's humongous. I know, because I was just in it last year with my wife, and they gutted her. And I'm telling you, like, these are death centers. They're not healing centers. Yes, they can help you and do certain things. And I do really appreciate doctors and nurses, because they're good. There's some really good people. But, I mean, really, if we have the power to heal people, where is all the healing that we're, we're supposed to be doing, be able to do? I think what's going on is um, the funding for everything pretty much is going to tr uh, traditional medicine. Of course it is. And um, they're not looking to cure people. I, I don't care because there's no. a lot of, there's a lot of uh, ways that, cancer some cancers can be cured that are being totally ignored and uh they're natural methods and um so uh, you know they don't they have to keep making their money on these drugs and you know radiation and whatever the hell they do and you know i mean yes i believe that a lot of people are really being poisoned to death there's no doubt about it um, but some people are helped by it. Some people actually come out of it. But Have you ever heard of uh, Essiac? No, I haven't. The Essiac treatment. It's, it was a woman here in, in Canada, in northern Ontario. Her, it's her last name spelled backwards. But she came up with a concoction. It's like burlap root, and it's, it was more native traditional stuff. And it's four ingredients that you can go find in the bush, and you make a tea out of it. And it's, yeah. it's a concentrate. And she was healing people with this. Well, of course, she got shut down. Well, guess yep. what? Her her easy little treatment spread. Everybody figured it out and started making it. Well, my, my best friend's dad got this baseball. And I mean, it was huge. This tumor on his side above his hip. It was just massive. Mm -hmm. And he said, and his, and his wife, uh, they're both dead now, but she was a nurse her whole life. And she was she pushed him. You get in there, get get the treatments and everything. And he said, "Not a chance. I am not going in to there because I'll I'll do, it, it'll kill me if it doesn't kill me." Right. Good so he you. got onto the SIAC treatment, and no word of a lie. In two months after you you take a shot of this every morning. Some people just mix it in tea or just hot water, or whatever. He started taking this every morning. In two months, that baseball on his side was gone. Yep, I and, believe and it. He lived, yeah. he lived for two more years after that. And I've, it wasn't it wasn't that that took him out in the end. I've I've heard of the SEAC T. Yeah. Yeah. Research her and, and the story behind it and how the government and cocksuckers got behind it and shut her ass down. But it but but the information had already spread. And she I, proved it. She I, proved I, that it was healing people and people testified and there was lots of documentation as to all the healing. That's just one thing. There's sure. been many other people shut down trying to heal people. Exactly. <clears throat> but exactly. you can't shut, you can't, if this energy thing is real and, and it works, and I'm looking into it a lot, if it's, they, you can't shut somebody down unless you kill their ass. Like if I wanted to heal you over the phone and I have the power to, like your Reiki stuff, 
what can they do about it? Right? Mm, well, not that. much. You know, the world, this, this, this place is full of energies, <clears throat> good and bad. Where well, I look at it. Yes. You well, know, like Amy, when you when you were having trouble there, Amy, what did I say? I'm sending in my good vibe, my good love, my good energies, mm-hmm. hoping it helped you out. I, now I don't know how it would have helped you out, but I I couldn't help you financially, but I could definitely send you my vibes, energy, whatever. If there's anything well, to it, you know, we try, I, right? Yeah, I don't know whether it was your energy that was it or what, but I certainly feel better now well i thought about i thought about you constantly there for a few days knowing Aww. that you that you were in a predicament i i didn't know the extent of it and it didn't matter i, I was sending you my good vibes and whatever I that is right? that so much right yeah you know, how hard was it for me to do that not very hard at all <laughs> right yep. i just yep. concentrated on it and sent you good energy if if you know and not knowing anything about this stuff myself you know you know, we can't prove a lot of this stuff if it's working or not, can we? Yeah, I know Aaron wants a test for everything, but some things maybe maybe they can't be tested. Well, <clears throat> I don't know. They're saying that a lot of the, the I, did, research... I just want I just want to believe things for good reasons. That's all. When, well, I, when I'm, I'm not put, in, I'm not into accept, belief. When I accept or believe something, I just want it to be for good reasons. Yeah. No. Obviously. Yes. I get that. You know, yeah. I'm not into I'm not into believing stuff just because it's out there. I'm into does it make sense? Is it logical? Can it work? And is it working? It's not about me. I don't believe. You know, faith healing. I I, I can't buy into that. I've seen too much yeah. fakery involved with it, right? And like I said, I got a pastor in the family that claims he can faith heal people. Hey, speak- I'm like, really? But you can't heal your sister. You just you just made me think of something that I did want to ask Allison. I wanted to ask her earlier, and it slipped my mind. Um, regarding Reiki and the energy healing aspect of Reiki, um, does it ever not work? Sure. So, what can we chalk that up as? I mean, whether it works or not, is it is it a sub, dare I say a subjective thing? <sighs> Maybe the Possibly. recipient wasn't open to it. Well, yeah, I mean, that's I mean, one I, thing I, I learned. If the recipient isn't open to it, it's most likely it's not going to work. But, um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, it's it's hard for me to say one way or the other. I mean, it could work. It might not work. It might totally uh, take care of a problem that wasn't even discussed. Um, so that's where that goes. I just do my best um sometimes you know i work uh you know several nights in a row like blue was saying that he did with amaratsu um that's about all i can tell you it doesn't always work or might work several days later uh after uh, a treatment if that makes sense do you, do you, do you believe or do you think? I don't. I hate to use the word believe because I'm just so sick of that hang word. On, hang on. I like to use the word think. Sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but um, I see. I'm looking through the chat. Influence. If you're, I, I don't know if you left and came back, but um, you're free to come in if you want to, sweetie. The uh, link is in your in your hangouts. I know you know where it is, so come in anytime if you want to. If you're listening, go ahead, guys. I didn't mean to interrupt. Anyway, um, where was I going with that? Um, do you believe that that we, we do put off positive and negative energies? I certainly do for the fact that I've seen what happens with my own body, yes, electrically I speaking. Like, I mean, I can actually, I've, there's been times where I can see a spark. It looks like the same spark that's coming off a spark plug off my fingers, right? So I, I always feel myself personally in a positive way that i am positively charged like if i touch something negative and i've got too much positive energy flowing through me you're gonna see sparks <laughs> well that's that's nothing special i mean the static electricity we've all had our experience. no i understand that Aaron. i, I so, get that i mean but i'm just saying your there's body, a positive your electrical body is, energy in you okay well there's no doubt about that that's measurable that's a fact well we can send wi-fi why can't we send our thoughts as Wi-Fi is not where the future is supposedly going here, you know. 
Uh, well, that's, as, that's where I'm getting up. Getting as far as that. I know, like, there's supposed to be technology. You know, that, and it, there's it, supposed to I, be technology I, available that allows um, one person to with with this technology. You can. It's called voice to skull, where they can literally yeah. Put, yeah. put thoughts in your mind. I, I don't know how true that is. This is what I'm hearing. But I'm I, saying if we if we even just break it down to a basic uh, frequency, like say. Uh, I like. Have you ever been measured for to see what your positive electricity is? Uh, my uncle had a little mach- machine he bought there. It was about ten years ago, I think. I remember, and he was ch- checking each other in the family. Just stand there and clench your all your muscles in your body, and this thing would get a reading off you of how many like uh, volts you're putting out, basically, right? Yeah, from a it's, distance. It's well, it's right? abso- it's absolutely measurable. So anyway, in my I mean, we're talking I've about always, actual I've, electricity, like real energy that we know exists. Yeah, well, it's it's like it's measuring the, the electrical aura coming off you, so to speak. It's not actually measuring like a voltage that you're. No, it's measuring a voltage. Some. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying, right? It's because you're there's a field around you, so that's it's what an it's electromagnetic up on. field because electromagnetism, yes. electrons, electricity. And a magnetism, yes, yeah. they they coexist. They do not exist independently of each other. You so can't get, you so cannot have magnetism without a, the movement of electrons, and you cannot move electrons without creating a magnetic field. So right, they right. coexist. I, I know all this stuff. I I, I know that. But, right, well, but so okay. get this. So so my uncle measures of. There's about five of us there, and I went last. So this is why I'm saying about. I feel like I'm very positively charged. Anyway. You know what my reading was? Three times what everybody else in the room was. And my uncle and I are built almost identical. We're four years apart. We have identical muscular bodies. And I was three times what he was. And he's like, oh, my God. Okay, you're so, really high. So maybe it was winter well, and you walked across the carpet in your socks. I no, mean... we were all just standing <laughs> on his hardwood floor. <laughs> but I'm just saying, back to my point of, I've always felt very positively energetically charged in that respect that I know I've got this electrical positive charge, but you know, as far as the, the, the mental telepathy thing and sending out your positive energies to people, I've always thought that, yes, I can send positive energy to that guy, just like I can send them negative energy, whether it be through my voice or whatnot. Right. Yeah. You know what it's like. You're, I agree. You're, your positive, loving voice can totally affect somebody's mood. Or, and I know I have it, my negative, I'm frustrated, angry voice can come out and negatively affect people. Sure. Just by hearing just maybe the volume or the tone out of my it's voice. It's the vibrations. The vibrations, yeah. The, the frequency, the vibrations, all that good stuff. And also, like... So some there's people- something to it is what I'm saying. I'm not saying I have proof of it. But I'm just saying there's got to be some more to it that, that I do think that we can probably somehow learn to heal people, whether it be, well, because what well, was it, the Egyptians and even further back, they were healing with sound. Yes. Um, That's where our whole musical thing, our whole music theory, and it was all based on that, and it was all centered around that. Yeah, wasn't, I mean, Royal, I mean, wasn't Royal Raymond Rife doing that? Yeah, well, I mean, this is ancient stuff, right? Um, I'm sure yeah. there's been lots of people since, but I know that when, from what I've studied, this was going on. This was the, the only healing thing they had back then was was a certain a certain key, a certain vibration, a, a hum, mm, om, you know what I mean? Well, um, if you watch the movie The Pyramid Code, um, a ways a little ways away from. Um, the Giza pyramids. There was another pyramid, and they next to the pyramid there were rooms that were built specifically for sound healing. And people laid on tables. I think they were made of crystal quartz, and they also had like obelisks there that were quartz. And uh, so the sound frequency from, however, they produced this say music or whatever it was was used to heal people um and also yeah uh speaking singing words um vowels letters um do have feeling 
uh, do have healing effects. In fact, I was going to go for my doctorate, right? This is like in the 80s, and I didn't go. I got married and had kids instead. But <clears throat> what I wanted to do on my doctorate thesis was um, to write a paper about um, the healing of of uh, through singing and vibration, according to um, Pythagoras, because Pythagoras said when you're singing, your bone bones vibrate through the um, you know through the sound. Mm -hmm. And so my thought was that you know probably other people have done this, but my thought at the time was that the um, the vibration changes the molecular structure of oh, it sure does. that which is around it. It sure does. So that would promote healing. So well, it, um, sh it sure does. And I've done cymatic experiments, and I've talked about cymatics. I've had shows on completely entirely based on cymatics, mm -hmm. and um, I've shown um, at least two dozen examples where cymatic experiments can provide uh, the the shape. And form that is all kinds of biological features, like everything from the spinal column of a human being to the mm -hmm. entire skeletal structure of a snake to a turtle shell to uh, um, the the strange patterns on a coat on a giraffe to coral to mollusks. Um, I did a cymatic experiment in my basement. And I did it on camera. Um, I even made a video. I I remember that. I remember it too. And I, I made a cherub beetle out of cymatics. Um, so I even have a theory, and it's, I believe it's my own. I don't know if anybody else has come up with this kind of idea. But it, regarding like abiogenesis, which is one of the biggest questions in science, where does life actually come from? How, does we, how do we get life from non-life? And I think that cymatics has a lot to do with it because if you can create – physical structure with sound then um um okay uh influence she got tied up she'll be back in a bit um so if you can create physical structure with sound and and by the way they are three-dimensional structures okay so usually in cymatic experiments you're doing it on a metal plate or a glass table and it's only two dimensions but keep in mind that the standing wave of, of the sound wave in cymatics, it's actually a three-dimensional structure. So um, I'm thinking that perhaps uh, certain amino acids and, and uh, uh, organic compounds could very easily create their own DNA structure simply through a cymatic uh, type of environment. It's That's, a good hypothesis. I think, it's, I think it's worthy of consideration. For sure. I do too. Um, I, I know yeah, that there's got to be something to that. You know, it's like, uh, in the Bible, like God spoke and it's like, he spoke everything into existence. That's right. You know in I mean? the beginning, there was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Yeah. Yeah. But who, who did God tell that? And by to? the way, by the way, <laughs> Hey, Hey, by the way, if you like etymology, let's consider the word universe. What is that? Break that yeah. word down. Uni verse one, one verse, Song. one verse, Song. one verse. Vocalization. So that means we are it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we're not hurtling through space on a spinning ball then, if that's no, true. No wonder she would, <laughs> no wonder Because where's would, God is God chasing us on his on his ball? No wonder <laughs> no wonder Shiva dances, man. She's dancing to music. Do you know who she Shiva and what's the other one? Brahma and Vishnu. Vishnu? Yeah. They're all the three three phases of the sun. Yeah. To me, the closest thing to God in this world to us to, and to me is the sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I That's don't why pray. It's always been worshipped, and then and all these religions. Yeah, but just I just worship worship just, under anthropomorphized fictional characters. Just make sure that when you pray, that you pray to Joe Pesci. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I'm not into praying. You know, like like that the old Zeppelin uh, lyric there: "Crying won't help you, and pray praying won't do you no good." <laughs> Not a big fan of praying because who what who are you praying to? You're praying to most people are praying to Yahweh or Jesus. Well, they're both fictional characters in a book. So what are you praying to? I think we need to get more on this on this universal level or worldwide level where 
it, we're part of the energy if we're light beings and all this other stuff, right? Well, I think uh, that's true, and I, I'm, I, uh, I think sound makes a big deal. I mean, I think it's very important. Um, sound, uh, a lot of people who are doing music therapy and so forth are using specific pitches um, to heal certain parts of the body and um, our sound therapy. Um, and I studied some for a while because I was offered a position to, to do music therapy. Unfortunately, something happened and um, so they lost the, they lost the building, the people that owned, owned the building, which were mostly doctors. And uh, so I wasn't able to go through with it, but it was a great study. I studied a lot of, read a lot of books, and um, uh, it was just amazing about the different sound therapy. So, yeah, frequency, vibration, uh, I'm wondering if electricity. The, uh, if the pyramids might have been the first hospitals, they were, you know, if they were lying at the stars, uh, you and know, getting, get, getting a frequency through the portholes there in the top or the side or wherever they are. You and know, like said, the sound, the sound healing chambers, if they were using it, are they you, could have been doing that. Yeah. Do you guys know, or anybody in the chat, do you guys know that um, that geologist, that PhD geologist fr uh, from Bosnia who's doing all that research on the Bosnian pyramid? You guys looked into seeing anything uh, I think on I've, that? Yeah, I think I've, I think I, I've I seen. I looked into the Bosnian pyramid a bit. Yeah, There's, I don't remember his name, though. <laughs> I can't remember his name off the top of my head, um, but... Um, he, you know, he he runs tours down in, in the uh, tunnels that run underneath of that pyramid, and when you get near the center of that pyramid, everybody, like literally everybody, is saying that you can feel some sort of energy that's just t it makes your whole body tingle. Yeah, it, it's and, being trapped. In you know, there. and it's and they've detected like negative ions, which have been proven to be good for you, and all kind of cool stuff going on with that pyramid. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, that's the same people, you know, we're a battery and we need charging and we need discharging, you know, if you're positive, you charge, you need to discharge and, you know, the negative ion, you know, just I think take it's all your shoes pretty... and socks off and walk out into the grass for a minute and go ground yourself. Oh, dude, dude, I run around my property naked in the summertime. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Too actually, much information. I actually extended my, just so I can get as much sun as I can and grounded, you know, in the last few years that I've been. I, I'm not saying I run around totally naked. I'm just saying I'm in my shorts and bare feet all the time in the summertime. And speaking of which, it's over now. We just got winter today. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I feel so awesome when I'm standing naked in the sun. I just feel like I'm being charged. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's my best time of the year is when the sun is out full swing. Even in the wintertime, it could be 30 below. And believe me, in Canada, we see a lot of 30, 40 below. And I'll just stare right at the sun, and I can feel it heating my face up when, when it's thirty below outside. It's not warming up the the cold black steel that I'm right beside, but my face is getting warm. You know that sun is connected to us. And sorry, Aaron, it, I don't think for one cotton pick and second that it's ninety three million miles away. I'll never believe that. You can never sell me on that bullshit. Sorry. <laughs> well. <clears throat> I'm going no. to I'm going to stand with with Rufus, <laughs> and I'm not yeah, going to turn this you guys, conversation you guys into stick a... to your main. No, I don't want to get into the flatter ball earth. I just I have a connection to the sun that it's too close for my for your liking. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I, I do like my balls, and we'll leave it there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. you, you guys can you guys can have your mainstream Masonic beliefs. I'm I'm out on that one. There's some, there's, there's much more going on in this world than that. Simple. Simpleton C CGI cartoon stuff we get told. Well, I guess after we all die and meet up at the great bar in heaven, um, you, you, we can all have a laugh well, when we figure out. I don't know about out. heaven and hell. I, I believe they're made up, made up man-made stuff. But what I do think is there's something to the light at the end that everybody talks about. And I, for one, I'm going to buck the trend. I'm going to put this out there. I'm not going into the light. If we're light beings, I'm going to go be the light. I'm not going into that light. I think it's if there's this if the soul thing and all this energy stuff, maybe it is a trap. Yeah. I'll take my chances. And if my chances aren't gonna be any good, then we'll go into the light at the end. 
Yeah, the way I got it. That's if assuming, there is anything. That's assuming if there is anything you at the end. End. That's assuming. That's that if you, there is anything. The way I've got it worked is if that's really the love and all of that that it's supposed to be. Yeah. If I go the other direction, that love isn't going to change. And if I decide, well, gee, I probably should have gone that direction, uh, I'll be accepted. Uh, it, well, I've. If it isn't, if it won't accept me, it isn't what it said to be. Exactly. And if really, if it's just the light, like most people can't handle the light. Do you see how many people run around with sunglasses? <laughs> I don't think they're going to be able to handle that light. Yeah, you know, know. There's, some, there's something else too. I quit wearing sunglasses about four years ago now, and I started sun gazing in the evenings where my house is. I can only do it in the evening when it's setting in the west because I'm surrounded by trees. By the time it gets over the trees behind me here in the east it's too bright right it's 10 11 o'clock in the daytime but it's funny because where i've been working here lately i'm looking off into a field and watching the sun appear at the edge of the field basically what i don't know it's 30 or 40 50 miles away and uh so i've been and and all the guys that are in trucks there's like a dozen of us they're, every single one of them is wearing sunglasses and they're all like, oh, my God, the light is so bright, I can't see. And I'm driving into, the, driving into this glaring sun at 7 in the morning with no sunglasses on. And I have no problem with it. I've, I'm totally adjusted to this light. <laughs> you How know? do you feel since you were in that light? I mean, have you noticed any changes since you've been doing this? Oh, yeah. like, like, like I say, I feel so positive and, uh, you know, like I'm, a, I'm connected to it. Yeah, I, it, it, you know this whole skin cancer puts SPF nine thousand on your skin. I think this is where a lot of our skin cancers are coming oh, from. Oh, it is absolutely. In fact, they've done studies to show that the fucking shit that you're supposed to slather on to protect you from the sun actually has carcinogens built into it. And I forget what there, there's there, there's yep. a there's a term for. I'll think of it in a minute. Um, it, it's a it, there's a product that they put into those that's supposed to make it more absorbable into your skin. And, and that particular product is actually one of the most carcinogenic, carcinogenic things now, that, that's in there. So now, sure. don't get me wrong. I know that if you if you're in the sun for too long, you know, especially people that are fair skinned and aren't you, you know, most like my daughter and wife, they're so freaking white you can put in your see through them, and they're afraid to be in the sun. I said, well, you have to get in, you have to moderate yourself into it and get your build yourself up a tan, right? Look at us when we were younger, framing houses. 10, 12 hours a day with our naked backs to the sun, sweating, getting yeah. roasted. I Dude, should have cancer on my back. I should have cancer on my every, left arm. I'm every trucker's arm. Every but Aborigine no, in Australia and every you know Native African should just be dripping with skin cancer. Yeah. Well, I would like to see. A funny one. I would other... like to see some genuine studies to see how many of those people who spend literally all day practically naked, except for a loincloth. In the open sun of Australia and Africa, how many of those people coming down with skin cancer? Yeah, I here's here's a here's a funny one for you. One of the uh, one of the guys at work, guess where he's from? East India, uh, I think he's from Bangladesh. So we were talking, and one of the other guys said, to "Him, well, you're brown." I said, "He's not brown. He's tanned." <laughs> he says, "Yeah, right. No, no, all those Indians are all brown." I said, "Yeah, yeah." I, I think he's just tanned. Sure enough, he says he's right, and he lifted up his shirt, and he was and bone white underneath, except for his face <laughs> and his arms. And he, him from East India. So see a lot like you see them; they have brown arms and brown faces, but you don't see them naked much, right? Down to the down to their shorts. <laughs> a lot of those cultures really hide themselves from the sun. You know what I mean? They're like they're no different than white people here in North America. More, well, most of the people I know nowadays, they're fucking scared shitless of the sun. You know, they cannot let the kid out the door without slathering it up. And yet, when we were kids, we were out running around naked in our shorts all the time. We were getting yep. sunburned, blistered. I, I, right? I, yep, I remember one summer when we were at Lake Tahoe and. <clears throat> And I was out every day splashing around in the water and looking for crawdads and stuff like that. And 
by the end of the summer, somebody made mention of the fact that I looked like I was a Negro. <laughs> I was that dark. And, you know, and you know I'm, I'm I'm very white. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I've watched my own body over the years because of different lines of work and what you're doing at certain times that you don't get a lot of sun sometimes. And I've watched myself go from very tanned my whole body, what except for maybe my uh, underwear line, you know, of course you get the white ass, and, you know, but um, I've watched my whole body be completely tanned over the years to go through a different phase of work, line of work where I'm not getting sun anymore or as much as I used to. And my whole body go back to being white again. Well, here in the last bunch of years, I've been like, like a sun dog. I'm just out there every day, as much sun as I can get, love it. And now, I'm right. I'm more dark than the East Indians that are here. I'm working with. Wow. Right. Well, that's Just, saying a lot for a Canadian. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, I'm, I, I people ask me, are, are you Indian? Or are you native? Cause I'm so dark skin. It's because I get lots of sun and I'm not afraid of it. I love it. I look forward to it. When everybody's like, Oh, I got to get out of the sun. I'm like, not me. <laughs> I'm, I love it more the merrier and i think we need it if there's any healing aspects to the sun well hey i haven't been sick in a long time and i've been getting a lot more well you know what they say too you know especially us canadians with we're you know we're cooped up all winter long or you know even when you're outside the only thing that's getting any sun is your face right mm -hmm. yeah but most people that are outside working in minus 20 weather and all the snow, we're not getting much sun on our face either, really, because you're head down ass up. You're not looking up. Yeah. <clears throat> but no, I, uh, I'm, I'm a fur book. You got to get as much sun as you can. I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people are, there's so much cancers now is that people have been brainwashed into being afraid of it. I think it's a healer. Yeah. That in the goop. Especially when I'm sun gazing at night, when I'm sun gazing at night, I can see the rays coming from the sun and back to the sun. It's, it's it's really weird, and I just I just feel this. I feel different. I feel charged and positive, and you know, that's uh, great. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think there's something to the energy and the the light. Well, it would make it would make sense if uh, the psychopaths in control want to keep us sickly and needing these uh quote medical unquote services to put a lie out that the sun is bad for you and don't go in it and slather this cancerous crap all over yourself if you're going out you know it, it's well, and you, it's you look at these problem. psychopathic rulers too they're all pasty white dudes well, <laughs> most of them Although Most they're, of them, yes. you know, but hey, uh, I, you know, I, I just don't know. I, I don't you know, know, I've worked, I've worked with people here in Canada that are from Africa that are the darkest of the dark. I don't use the word black anymore because I understand the psyops that went on with the black thing. But anyway, I've worked with guys here that know word of a lie. They're cold when it's only 20 degrees and they're, they're dressed up and they're not getting sun. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, where I'm, where I've got my T-shirt off, and I'm wearing, and these guys are bundled up and wearing coveralls, full sleeves, and and a toque. Yeah. Because they were so used to their hot environment, doesn't mean they were getting much sun. You know what I mean? It'll you know, just take look, them a just while. Look at the, well, look at the Arabs. Look, look how they dress. They're completely covered from the sun, running around with their uh, bedspreads over them. You know what I mean? Even their women. Their women are covered up in a sheet and a sheet over their head. Like a lot of these cultures that are supposedly in the equator zone and more sun than everybody else, they're not getting much sun themselves. A lot of them, if you look at it. Not like not like I get. Fuck, the second the sun's out, I'm getting naked. I'm going outside. Well, you know what I mean? Maybe in the Middle East, but not in sub-Saharan Africa and not in Australia. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, I, that sort of negates your point. 
I mean, just because, you know, sure, there's lots of sun, there's deserts in the Middle East, and, and the Bedouins, they run around with sheets covering themselves up. Um, I understand that they do that for a reason, and that reason has to do with sweat retention. Um, yeah, no, I get that too, yeah. And as far as, I, as far as the women go, that's a religious, uh, cultural thing. has really nothing to do with, you know. No, no, and I, I get that too, but my point is, is there's nothing to do these with cultures. The no, but I'm just saying, even in these cultures with all this religious stuff and garb and everything, if you just look at it, those people aren't getting much sun, even though they're in it just as much as, you know, we get 15 hours of sunlight here in the summer too, right? Close to 16. We get and we get just as hot here. It gets gets gotten very hot here in this country too. I mean, our summers aren't cold, mind you. This one was a cool one, but I think you know, the summers are much hotter in the Middle East. You know, much much hotter. You know, they're gonna go up 120 plus maybe. We 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 get that here. <laughs> we get our heat waves here where it's smolder and hot, and the freaking country's on fire. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to compare apples to oranges on who's hotter and who's not. I'm just saying, you know, if you look at the way they dress, they don't actually, although maybe hotter there, they're not getting that much sun the way they dress. I understand why they dress that way. Yes, the sweat retention, everything else. But I'm just saying, here, we're running around naked in that same blistering heat with the sun, clear skies. You know what I'm saying? So it seems like maybe they're just as afraid of the sun as the, a lot of people here. So that's my point. So where me, I'm not afraid of it at all. I have, I absorb as much of it as I can get, and I've been I've felt really healthy the last bunch of years since I changed my I don't know my habits to where I can I, I make it a point to get out in the sun. You know, instead yeah. of just coming home and getting on the couch after work. Hey, the sun's still out. I'm going to go out and get some sun because I didn't get much today. I was at work. You know, but then on the weekends, I'm like, you'll you'll find me out in the backyard running around with just shorts on and getting tons of sun all the time. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I think there's something to that healing aspect of it. If I could, if I could rein in the ropes on this conversation a little bit, try to bring it back to Reiki while I've got Allison on the phone. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to get off topic. No, that's there. fine. I don't mind a good conversation go going where it wants to. And you know me, Blue, and we often get sidetracked and sometimes for hours on end. Um, and I, I genuinely Well, that's don't. what us knuckleheads do. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I genuinely don't mind. But I do have a couple of other questions I wanted to throw at Allison before we wrap this up or, or maybe trying to kill some time while maybe hopefully influence can come in if she, if she can manage the time. Um, um, but by the way, before I do, I want to address Eamon Padama. Hey, uh, Eman and I are sort of chatting in the side chat about evolution regarding particularly my abiogenesis theory. <laughs> um, he made a comment, and I hope it's a he, and if I'm wrong, then please forgive me. Um, I don't know, I'm speaking to you, Eman. I, I honestly don't know. if I, I, I think you're a man, but I, I don't know for sure. Um Richard Dawkins said that Darwin made it possible to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist. Now Darwin's theory looks false. So the logical corollary of what Dawkins said is that life looks designed. Um, well, if that's... Hmm, so the logical corollary of what Dawkins said is... So did Dawkins say... Did Dawkins come out and say life looks designed? I know he may have said it looks designed, but something that looks designed doesn't mean that it is designed. But here's the thing I wanted to throw out there, because I, you know, a couple of weeks ago we did a show on cannibalism. And after that show was over, I discovered an article. I think it goes back to nine, uh, 2014, I think. So maybe five years ago. Richard Dawkins was actually suggesting that we should get over our taboo and that human meat in laboratory grown human meat could be the solution to the, you know, the cow fart scenario, the, the global warming, climate change bullshit that, <laughs> that I couldn't fucking believe it. Dawkins is, 
is someone that I admire greatly. And when I saw this, I, I, I just, I, I literally took a shit on my computer. I, I literally dropped trowel and just shit right on my computer. I couldn't fucking believe what I was looking at. I don't um, admire any of these talking heads. Well, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I do admire some of them and, until I don't, right? Until you until you learn something that's like, wait a minute, stop the presses. Um, but I, yeah. could, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe what I saw. Um, thanks for not misgendering, for not misgendering you. <laughs> Hey, hey, as long as you don't mind if I say, hey, guys. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you guys probably I, saw that. Yes, I have no yeah. problems with hey, guys. <laughs> hey, right. I've got the anonymous female version on there, so I guess that makes me a guy, right? I I could just go through the whole gamut of pronouns. He, she, him, her, it, us, they. I could just call everybody it from now on. Apparently, oh, Aaron, seen... stop insulting everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like how you just uh, pronounced me, dude. <laughs> I want to, you to use the pronoun Fliggle, okay? Fliggle? Yeah, just call me Fliggle, okay? Uh, okay, so it's LG, <laughs> LGBTIQRSVPF. F. F for That's Fliggle. right. I'm Fliggle. And I would like to oh, add this to, to that list. I would like to add M I C K E Y M O U S E. Okay. <laughs> All right. Had our fun. So All Alice. Pro- so Allison, <laughs> and I'm not. I'm not digging on you with this. This is something that I heard somebody else say. Um, another supposed. Reiki master as I was doing some research looking to find just some cursory information on what it is what it's about and to see who is out there talking about these types of you know basic explanations introductory explanations um uh, let me see this one person was saying things like let me see uh besides the obvious it's a Japanese relaxation technique she said it relaxes you in such a way that it begins to remove blocks. And then she said, you might ask what a block is. And she says it's described as a trauma or a grief. Maybe you lost a pet or a loved one or a breakup or a divorce. And she said it involves heavy energies. And then she said thicker energies that these heavy energies and thick energies get stuck in the body. And that, to me, just sounds like some dog shit Deepak Chopra woo-woo nonsense. And that just makes the... If there's anything to Reiki, if there's anything legitimate to Reiki, this, this, the people out there who talk like this just, just ruin it. And I just sort of wanted to get your opinion on that. Um... That's interesting. You know, my teacher, as far as my teacher goes, he never discussed blocks like this. But um, basically, you're trying to balance the energy in the body and get it moving. I mean, I suppose it's possible for blocks. Um, Sometimes energy does feel a little heavier, but I don't find it with Reiki so much as with other healing modalities that I do. What does it what does it mean to have an energy that feels heavy? What does that even mean? Um, I feel like uh, I'm listening to Deepak Chopra when people talk like that. Well, I mean, I think how can I describe this? Um it's very very thick. Does it make sense or like No, uh, you're not no. Do better. I don't know how to describe it. I mean, I know, and and your words, my, my auric clearing <laughs> technique. When when the energy is extremely negative, it's very hard to get the flow and get it moving. Um, you know, and what you're trying to do is get negative stuff off of people's auras and stuff like this, and. You know, sometimes it can be very, very difficult. It can be very tiring. I know I've had times when I've done Reiki for a lot of people. 
Um, I used to go on Facebook and just say anybody need Reiki and blah, blah, blah. And so I'd be sending it to, you know, tons of people that said, yeah. And, um, you know, but I wasn't charging myself up. And so I found myself depleted. But uh, on the other hand, the other type of healing that I do, it's very easy to get depleted because it takes a lot longer to do. And uh, oftentimes I got to clear myself and uh, uh, of anything because you kind of suck suck stuff onto you. Uh, it's it's a it's a lot of hoo hoo to you probably, but it's sort of quantum stuff. And yeah, it's sort of Deepak Chopra e, but I don't think he does that particular form of healing. Yeah, people feel people that do different types of energy feeling will feel that there's blockages or something's not moving or something stuck. Um, I haven't felt that with Reiki. Um, that's all I can tell you. Okay. Um, do you want to offer an opinion on people who use that sort of language to describe Reiki in such a way as to literally turn people like me, just turn me right off. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, I understand, and I'm not putting it on you. I understand that <laughs> everybody is the most, uh, you know, communicative and with the largest vocabulary and the best communicator type people out there. Well, they're um, trying to sell their product too. You know, you got to understand that. So everybody's got to make themselves sound better than the other one. But, um, you know, and I'm not trying to criticize no, that that's a really good, either. No, that's definitely a good point. You know, uh, you know, and that's I know, a lot of reasons why I think there's more types of Reiki and people are channeling more symbols and, you know, people have certain guides and their guides are better than your guides and all this crap. Um, you know, I just do the basic thing and I don't really pay much attention to everybody else's stuff. But, um, so you know, if, I'm sorry, finish your sentence. It's okay. Go ahead. Ask away. Hey, Blue, mute, mute your mic next time you go to the bathroom. Well, I thought I just did. <laughs> well, piss on you guys. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Peace, peace on earth and piss on you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I thought for sure I hit the button there before you come to the bathroom. Yeah, I, I was feeling this urge to go to the bathroom really bad, and I was one. Whoa. Oh, um, boy. So you were saying. No, I'm a boy. I, when I go, I got to go. And I don't care where it is or who's hearing it. <laughs> you were saying, Roof. Um, I, Jesus, I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> The, the sound of urination just sort of took it right out of me. <laughs> It'll come back. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I it. it just got pissed away. We just, we, <laughs> hey, don't piss on me and tell me it's raining. <laughs> uh, I, I was in the rain all day, so I know what that's like. Um, Hang on. Let me, I'm looking at my notes here and I, I thought I had something else at you. Um, where, let's see. Whoa. Try to get back on the train of thought here. Um, okay, you, you said uh, people have to sell their, you know, wares, right? They, they have to make themselves sound good. They have stuff to sell, right? Their services, maybe books. Um, well, let me, let me just add to that if I can. Sure. Um, people also use Reiki to heal emotional issues or situational issues. Um, you know, it's not always just used to heal physical issues. Uh, some people use Reiki on inanimate objects. Um, supposedly, you could use it for anything. Primarily, I use it for um, working in, in healing mode. But I admit, I did use it on my car <laughs> at times <laughs> when it wouldn't start. And did it work? Well, I guess it did. I mean, you know, I didn't have a battery tester with me, but um, I used to go to my sister's up in Maine every weekend, practically. And so I'd stop in Elliot, which was about halfway up where I was going, and 
to the Dunkin' Donuts there and get a coffee and make a pit stop. And um, I'd come back to the car and the car wouldn't start. You know, I had this old Lincoln, which I loved and I wish I never got rid of. But um, anyway, it just wouldn't start. So I'd sit there for maybe 20 minutes and uh, reiki the car. And then it would start up and I would continue on to my sister's. And that was just about every weekend that car would do that. Well, until it finally died. But it could be that, you know, it was low and then it, there was a little charge in it. I don't know when it needed to sit. I know that happens sometimes. So I can't really claim that it was Reiki, but I did give Reiki energy to a car. Well, I got a really bad joke for you. Okay. Um, it is fall season, and, you know, the leaves are turning and starting to fall. I was just wondering if I could use Reiki on my leaves. <laughs> How so? <laughs> he wants to Reiki his leaves up. Oh, duh. <laughs> that flew over my head. That's so funny. <laughs> Sorry. I know that's a really bad joke. I know. I like it. I thought it's funny. <laughs> I bet you there's a lot of people who would like to rake their leaves. <laughs> well, Donald Trump said that we should rake our leaves to prevent, you know, brush fires. So. Mm. Oh, no no talk about raking leaves. My yard just filled up today. With leaves. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I hate raking leaves. That's why I bought a blower. I just blow them in the neighbor's yard now. I'm going to need to <laughs> I'm going to need to rake my leaves soon. <laughs> so so, Roof, was there another question that you had? I, I thought I did, but, but Blue Blood took it right out of me when he flushed the toilet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if anybody's got any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, if you're going to be thinking about me pissing all night now, aren't you? Oh, you're not going to live this down for a long time. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll, I'll take all the ribbon I can take. That's Al Allison. Yes. Um, what... What about this? I have been having some lung problems, and I was wondering if you would be willing to send me some Reiki, and I can report back on what I experience. Sure. Yeah. Um, have I'll do it. I'll do it, Amy. I'll do it. Aaron, <laughs> send you my all oh, my email. You have my email. I I can if, if she doesn't have it, I can give it to her. Well, yeah. I, I think that we've been in contact. Yeah, but wise yeah, send me an email. Send me your location. Okay. Okay. And I'll I'll do that. Um, I'll I'll get back to you with email, and we'll do, um, we'll do three treatments and see what happens. Okay. I, All that right. Sounds awesome. You know, I can't promise anything will happen, but we'll see if something does or if you feel it or whatever. So if anybody in the chat has a question for Allison about Reiki, uh, type now or forever hold your, shall I say, peace? Or peas. Uh, we, we know Blue was already holding his peace a minute ago. <laughs> hey they give they give us a toy to play with damn it we're playing with it well, I, I think James Washman is really awesome though I just wanted to say um, I think it's really worth looking at some of his videos um, he's got some really interesting things going on. I think it's something that everybody would enjoy that's into um, physics. I, you know, I never took physics in school. Um, so t to me, it was quite profound. And, and there was a lot of quantum type things he was talking about. I, I just see a lot of toilet emojis popping up in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see the chat where I'm at, so it's funny to just hear this. Funny how my piss energy is affecting everybody. Yeah, uh, remotely, no less. Mm. <laughs> at, a, at a distance. 
<laughs> through the old through the old Ethernet. <laughs> Ethernet. I like that. <laughs> well, really, we can send a lot of shit through the air nowadays, can't we? Mm. It's all radio waves, man. My piss is full of radio waves. <laughs> are you are are you in uh, are you in French Canada? Wee oui, wee. Oui? Oh no no, Tabernacle, no. Wee <laughs> wee. Oui, oui? No, that Quebec is in the east. I'm in the west. <laughs> no wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> no no wee oui, wee. Oui. No wee. Oui. Yeah, the 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 main Catholic metropolis is in Quebec. The French Catholics over there in Quebec. I used to truck in and out of Quebec and check this out. <laughs> I used to haul I used to haul hydro switches to the different uh, utility places in small town areas of Quebec, and uh, I learned two things in French. I hated French in school. I hate it. I still hate it. I can't stand it. We should ban it. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I learned two things. I learned two French sentences when I was started trucking into Quebec back in the early '90s, and it was how to order breakfast and how to ask where to park the truck. That's the only two things I needed to know. And you know the other thing I learned about the French in Quebec? Well, most of them are uh, dual. They know both. Is that, man, they're the most two-faced people I've ever met is in Quebec. Wow. Especially in, Mont in, in Montreal, if they know French and English and you ask them something in English, they'll start talking French and pretend that they don't know. But then if you go into northern Quebec, where all they know is French, They'll do their damnedest. You might not understand what they're saying, but they'll do their damnedest to help you and guide you. <laughs> but go to Montreal. Yeah, je, je totally parle, different. Je parle un petit peu. Yeah, I, not into not into French. We got some French in our family. I can't stand being up around them at Christmas because they, you know, we're all we all speak English. They all speak English, and they'll sit around in their little group talking French. I hate that. Casque que say? What are you talking about? <laughs> I know enough French to pick certain things out. I just I don't ever want to be fluent in it to begin with because I I just don't like the language. I just don't. To really? me, it's just it's just a bunch of English backwards anyway. I I I took French for a number of years and I loved the language, and I yeah, have I now don't... I have now forgotten most of it. So. Even as a young kid, you know, they rammed that shit down our throats when we were kids, and we wanted nothing to do with it. It was still part of the program here in Canada. You got to ram the French down everybody's throats, even though they're the minority language in this country. Now, there's more Chinese here now than there are French. There's more Indians than there are French. But yet, we got to have French. If you look at all of any product in Canada, it has to have French as well as English on it. I had to study French for quite a while, and especially where I was going to school to sing classical music. And actually, it was one of the my favorite languages to sing in. And Amy, like you, I totally forgot a lot of it because I haven't used a lot of it for quite some time. Yeah, it's it's been decades and decades, man. <laughs> I wish I remembered more. You know, I, I sit there and somebody says, well, what does this word, this French word mean? And I'll go, it's familiar. Um, hang on, let me go to Google Translate. Yeah, I gotta look it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's one of the requirements too of our politicians are to work for the the Catholic Canadian government here. You have to know French. You have to be bilingual in this country to have anything to do with government stuff. It's funny how that's a requirement, yet it's the minority language in this country. Wow. Right? Sad. How about, yeah, that's the way the world's gone, the way. Everything minority gets precedence now, eh? Yeah. Everything minority gets the ultimate treatment. You know, I was just wondering if they can force, if they can force French onto the majority, I'm wondering, do they force English onto the French minority? No. Nope. You could, well, here, here's a prime example no. of French, French in Canada. The, the, the border of Quebec and Ontario, you have Ottawa, go up, the, go up that line, and there's a lot of French in Ontario. But if you go into those towns, it's English on the signs, and then they'll have a little French extra. But go into Quebec, 
and it's French on everything and very little English on top of it. You know, the road signs, Sud, Nord, Est, Ouest, you know, it's not North, South, East, and West. It's in French. All the road signs are in French. All your streets, your roofs, and all that, it's all French. <clears throat> And they want to separate. They still want to separate and break up Canada. And you know, the rest of us, we're cheering them on. Go for it. You want to be on your own, have your own little French country? Go for it. Because the first province that's going to separate from this country is the one I'm in, Alberta, the oil province. Because we're giving all of our money to support Quebec and all their initiatives. You know what I mean? They're sucking money out of this province. So if you ever see Canada break up, the first one that'll be broke broken free of the this province because we want nothing to do with quebec here this country is not as unified as people think it is really not much <laughs> well guys let's um let's think about wrapping this up do you want to pop off your final thoughts well uh, on the ener on the energy thing i there's, there's something to it now, as far as the healing aspect of it, you know, like I said, I really do hope there's something to it. And I and I do feel that there is something to it because, like I said, I, I when people are needing and help and I can send out some positive vibes to them, whether it's energy or if it's just my thoughts and it's getting through to them in some way that we don't know and can't explain. I really hope that's true because I really try to do that. And, I, and I'm going to have to do it here now going forward with my daughter because she's completely devastated and traumatized and the only thing that can help her is you know positive thoughts and energy i would say you know what i mean yeah and um doesn't matter what doesn't matter what you say was, saying doesn't change anything it's was it is this her is this, is this her first child actually she uh she was pregnant last year and she miscarried at about two and a half months or something like oh, that the baby man. didn't develop a heartbeat so this time the pregnancy took and we just went here a few weeks ago to they had the, this uh, new 3d 4d 5d ultrasound where you, we went and sat in and they can live stream it to everybody and you and you actually see the baby and it's in somewhat color you know what i mean mm. it's really good it's really good technology they got now so we were seeing the baby seeing her smile we knew it was a girl. She's already was named, and today she's dead. Fuck. Aww. I am so day. so sorry. Yeah. Well, I you know, and I didn't I didn't like I said I didn't come on here tonight because I wanted any sympathy for the situation. Uh, what I wanted to talk about was what my mom said when I gave her the information, and she said, and how many times have we all heard this? Well, maybe it wasn't meant to be, and it wasn't in God's plan. I said, Mom. Take that bullshit line and don't ever say it to me again about anything in this world because it's a bunch of horse shit. Yeah. Um, you're telling me that you're uh, telling me if, you're if, telling me that that wasn't God's plan to have her have this baby. To, she's already full term and it was due in a few days. Then God's so it was God's plan to get her pregnant. God's plan to get her pregnant and then God's plan to have her fucking traumatized and de devastated. Because I'll tell you what, if, if there's something to do with if this, if it wasn't meant to be, God could have stopped it before she was pregnant. Don't go there. <clears throat> exactly. So, you know, my sentiments today, based on what my mom said, oh, it angered me almost instantly because I'm so sick of this, this uh, God's plan bullshit. And I, and, I, and I thought to myself, you know what? If there's something after this, after we're dead in this body and then we carry on, if there's something to that, man, if there's some God that's responsible for the fucking suffering, I'm going to go look for that motherfucker. We got some explaining to do. You know what I mean? <clears throat> you know, if there's gods responsible for this world that are in charge of certain that, whatever, there's been one, there's been many. I'll tell you, man, I'm looking for them when I get out of here. Yeah, that's horseshit. Uh, that's horseshit, Blue. That would yeah, I, I know. That's that what I'm would, saying. That kind I, of I don't put too much into it, Blue. Me too. You, you know, I don't put too much thought into it. I've cleared my conscience of all these bullshit beliefs we've been fed our whole lives about God and all this other stuff. Like I said, I've made my connection with the sun here lately, and that's my connection. Like George Carlin said, you know what? I'm going to worship the sun. You know, I don't worship the sun. I just I have this connection with it now, and I feel better about that, and it's simple. I, I don't put too much thought in it. I definitely don't put any beliefs into as much as I'd like to be, be true, you know, this afterlife and you know, the reincarnation and all this stuff and the positive energy and the healing and all that. Great. If there's something to it, great. 
but I, I can't put, I can't back it because we cannot, there's nothing to back it with. You know what I mean? Now, for many years of my life, I thought when you died, that's it, lights out, she's game over. If that's right, so be it. If it's something else, so be it. I guess we'll see what we'll see, or we won't. <laughs> right? But I do think there's something more going on than just us hurtling through in mindless space and we're all here by accident. This, this, this place is too weird for that to be true either. So I don't put too much in anything. My mind is open. I keep looking for answers and truths, and usually the simplest thing tends to be the best logical answers that you can think of. You don't need to have somebody else tell you all the answers because as far as I'm concerned it's about this earth, this realm that we're living in, whatever it is, to me, if you ask me, I think it's totally unexplainable, and anybody that thinks they can explain it is usually full of shit. That's why I said I'm not a flat earther, I'm not a ball earther. I'm 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 starting a new meme. I'm a box earther because I think this earth world is a box full of shit. Awesome. Well, just my thoughts. Um, I largely, almost entirely agree. I think, probably entirely. Yeah. We put too much thought into stuff that we can't even come up with an answer for. Nobody can come up with an answer for most of the shit that we always talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah, and we all have egos, which means that some of us who are unaware of the, the potency of our own ego and how it will often prevent us from saying the phrase, I don't know, that people yeah. will make shit up before they'll say, I don't know. Exactly. And I'm, I'm not to that point. You know, we've all searched and looked and looked at everything there is to look at in this life, all the research we can do about any subject under the sun. And really, what answers have we come up with? You know, in the last bunch of years, I've really tried to work on my ego because I used to believe stuff. And, you know, you repeat it to the next guy. You know, if, 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 you're, if you're repeating bullshit, you're repeating lies, no wonder it becomes truth. Right. So I've really tried to get away from the, the rep that repetition. I'm just tried to rein in my own ego on that. And like you say, it's cleaned my conscious out. I've got rid of a lot of stupid beliefs that I know are bullshit now. But the thing is, is I think I'm trying mostly just trying to get a hold of myself and rein myself in sometimes and I'm put passing off stuff that I believe. You know what I mean? Yeah, people just need to get comfortable with the phrase, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's fine. It's cool. It's a respectable yeah. thing to say. You don't know? Just say so. You know, and at the same time, when I, I'll say I don't know, but at the same time, I still reserve the right to call bullshit when I think I see it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, Allison, final, yeah. final thoughts, dear. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's been really nice to be on here with you all. Um, my final thoughts. Uh, this was a great conversation. I really enjoyed it. It was pretty informational. And it's interesting to see how we agreed on some things. And uh, I hope that it was a learning experience for everybody one way or the other and um you know uh blue uh i think what you had to say makes a lot of sense and i think in a way that's a form of quote unquote reiki that you're doing um healing yourself that way and um i think that's amazing and i, I like the idea of you sending the positive energy to people i keep keep on keeping on um, I don't know. I, I just wish everybody Reiki blessings. I, I wish everybody a good weekend and a good week and everybody to stay healthy. And like you say, pick up your trash. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. are you going to help me Reiki my leaves? Sure. You know, yeah, I was I, nice talking to you too, Allison. Finally. I know, I know you were, you were genuine. You were initially worried about coming on and being drugged through the mud too much so uh, i hope my dumb jokes didn't uh, get under your skin oh, I, I hope i didn't say anything funny. to offend you no you said nothing to offend me thank you it was <laughs> very pleasant to uh have this conversation 
Thank you. Cool. Amy? You just have to, under, you have to understand that Rufus especially, me too, he's addicted to logic. Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't a bad thing. You know, I do. I critical do. Think, critical thinking is a good thing. I do acknowledge that there are energies. I acknowledge that we are creatures who couldn't operate without energy. I, there are energies that we can absolutely identify: heat energy, radiant energy, electrical energy, electromagnetism. And I'm just wondering, you know, I'm I'm genuinely curious what. And I know that there are other energies in the universe, and we're all swimming in a sea of energy. There's there's no doubt about that. This is testable, provable, knowable. We do know these things. Um, I just wonder how much of that is genuine, genuine woo-woo. Because I know a lot of people get on the woo-woo bandwagon, and they and like you said, Blue, you know, you start repeating something that's not necessarily true, and ultimately, you're basically spreading lies, not knowingly necessarily, but you're spreading information right. that's just not true. And, you know, we want to believe that we can heal. We want to believe that we can manipulate energy and help. We want to, we genuinely, we all want to help people unless you're a fucking psychopath, of course. But I, I just, I just caution people against, um, you know, falling for or believing in anecdotes. And look, I, I get it. A good story is a good story. I get it. And spreading false hope. Too I, I get it. One. A good story is a good story. But it's just a fucking story. It's just an anecdote. It's not evidence or proof. And I don't care if it's coming out of the mouth of a PhD. I don't care. I, I, I was recently having a um, kind of having a, co a comment section debate with some people about uh, near-death experiences. And, um, and this guy sent me a bunch of links to a bunch of lectures and interviews on near death and um this phd guy was talking about all these all these you know stories and anecdotes and ultimately what it wound up being was just a giant pile of anecdotes okay until i can see the hard science to me it's just a story stories are cool they're entertaining they're they're interesting they're thought provoking but they're not evidence for christ's sake and i would caution people to not put too much stock in a good story i don't care if it is how, how good evidence. a story Evidence isn't proof, right? Proof is proof. Evidence is just part of the proof. It's not evidence isn't proof. I think that there's a lot yet that we haven't discovered in science and that there's eventually more will be able to be explained and proven in the way you want it to be. But right now... So. Good point. But right now, the only thing that I can give you of physical proof is is what um, uh, oh, what's his name, Oshman said, and um, and uh, some smaller studies which um, basically, you know, said that uh, they did some blind studies which. You know, Reiki helped improve uh, pain, and for some people, and uh, made them more relaxed and lowered the blood pressure. But you know, you figure you'd do that in a relaxed environment anyway. You, you know, to that to that effect, I had some pretty bad injuries, some surgeries. And of course, you get the oxycontins and the Tylenol fours. About five or six years ago. I realized none of this shit was working for me. I didn't feel any better. I was just becoming addicted to pills. So I just cut it out. And I'll tell you, I started to get more into the positive, thinking I can heal myself. And I've been healthy ever since. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll never put another pill in my mouth ever. And I don't care what I have, what I've been given, what I contracted or anything. Like this finger right here right now. I'm not taking anything for it. If it gets infected, then we'll deal with it whatever way well, possible but it, i'm not it is infected shit. it is infected That's no why no it's, it's not infected up. well i mean yeah if you call that i i just mean you know to the point where ooh, it's getting ugly right now it's just swollen it's not really it's not like gangrene i've had some infections on my fingers from smashing with hammers and screws and everything else but you know i've always healed i've always healed myself you know a lot of things i should have went to the doctor for and i didn't they healed I, I don't know why I heal well, but anyway, I'm just, I'm not into taking man-made crap that may or may not work and get you addicted to it later on. Like my brother right now is 
totally addicted to shit because of a, an accident, you know? Now he's fucked. Now he's addicted to a plethora of pharmaceuticals. And that's his excuse for the situation. He, and now he, and I've, I offered him some suggestions to try. Not willing to try it. Why? Because now he's addicted to this stuff. Amy, final thoughts, Dare. I, I've been sort of waiting for that. My final thoughts. First of all, Allison, I did send an email. Uh, I thank you very much for being with us. And I thank you, Blue. And my love and my caring goes out to your sister. And no, my daughter. I'm sorry, your daughter. Uh, my mistake, your daughter. Appreciate and, it, Amy. Thanks. And, uh, and I'm sending you more healing vibes. Oh, thank you so or, much. Or I'm just sending you good, my good vibes. Awesome. Whatever they do for you, they do for you. That's Thank all I can you. Say. You're welcome. And and as always, love always. Yeah. You, you guys know my final thoughts. Allison nearly nailed it. Be good to each other. And for God's sakes, pick up your fucking trash. Yes, don't forget your fucking trash. And with, and, with, <laughs> and with that, I will be closing the stream. And you guys in the hangout, you can stay for a few minutes. Um, uh, our good friend Josh on um, Ray of Creation channel. He's going to be starting up his stream in a few minutes. I'm pretty sure he usually does. So uh, we're going to go ahead and kill this here, and you guys in in the hangout can stick around for a minute. And and after that, if you if you want to hang out, then um, that's where we'll be is over on Josh's channel. And so there it is, everybody. Be good to each other and um, pick up your damn trash. And we will <laughs> see you next week. Thank you, Oof. Thanks. <laughs>